Good afternoon from the scoreboard bar and grill here at Cedar Creek Marina. I'm Joe Hunk. Don't have the final injury report of the week, but here's what we do know as of right now for the Titans. Traylon Burks is officially out for the game on Sunday. Other t players that are going to be out, there's only two as of right now. That would be Tier Tart and Luke Gifford. Remember, MPF has a waiver for this week if the Titans do not want to add him to uh, the roster. But that also means that Peter Skaronsky should be good to go. We'll get that final injury report here in just a little bit. For all your foundation repair and waterproofing needs, you need to visit USSTN.com. Breaking news at once on your home for the Vols. The flagship station for your Tennessee Titans as well as home to 3HL. This is 104. Three HL one zero four five. The zone Friday edition is what's laid on Friday. It also is trash talk Friday. We're here for you six one five seven three seven one zero four five. Broadcasting live from Cedar Creek Marina, the brand new second scoreboard location. Yeah, and we are on the water. Let's go. It's time to get to it, baby. Somebody I know might have had a cigar on the oh little. That's a lanai. Oh, that, that is a little nine. I the, was out there on it. Off the houseboat. I had a ball out there, too. That was did a you? Great time. Did you have a good time? I most definitely it did. It smelled good, I'll tell you that. Hey, it, I think the fish liked it. I saw a couple of them trying to creep around. Just got a text from Keith Bullock. He's going to be here in about 10 minutes. The so, bullies uh, on the way. Come by and see us. We'd love to, we'd love to uh, experience uh, the Friday afternoon. That, I mean, just a gorgeous day. Temperature's phenomenal. Beautiful setting here at Cedar Creek Marina. Mm -hmm. Great food at Scoreboard. Libations. Libations. Cold beer. Should be flowing. Yes. And uh, we got all that for you coming up. Uh, Bully will join us uh, as long as he wants. Uh, he has an open invitation like on, it, uh, on Fridays and pretty much any time he wants to come over here. Titans legend uh, over the weekend. We're going to see how that went for him. Um, and uh, we'll go from there. Titans, uh, Colts coming up. Did I see where the Titans are now favored by two and a half? Did it? I caught it. I think I, I – where did I catch him at? Because I, I caught him Monday. I, I caught it money line Colts by one. Wow. And so now I think uh, – I read that earlier uh, for betonline.ag, but I haven't checked it out as you check it out. Uh, Hunk, who is out so far that we know? Traylon Burks, wide receiver, defensive lineman, Tier Tart, linebacker, Luke Gifford, anyone else? That is it as of right now. The if, final injury report hasn't come out, but, again, it, with MPF, he still has that roster exemption for this week. But that also means that Peter Skaronsky should be good to go. MPF and Kyle Phillips, I think, are listed as questionable at this point. Um, we'll check on that. Uh, internet connection out here, uh, working through that um, on the lake. But uh, but we'll get to that. Also, uh, it looks like Skaronsky is going to be able to give the Titans something. Hey, we so, take that. So we've got to figure out what that is. <laughs> hopefully, uh, hopefully it's at left tackle. Man, I don't know. You come off an appendectomy and just go to yeah, left tackle. Yeah, Let me just go ahead. You hadn't even practiced there. I'll take the I guy. Know you, I know you played there at college football. <laughs> this is a speedy guy. I will take the guy that just had his appendix taken out over the option we have now. I mean, as as rough a go as Daly had last year at left tackle, my man Dillard's already halfway there. And I, I, sack, I didn't sack want that. Allowed wise. I didn't expect that, didn't want that. He's, so. he's allowed six sacks. Uh, Daly gave up 12 last year. Um, so he's on pace for 25 and a half. There's no way he gets there. No. There's no way they allow that guy to trot out there every week, giving up 25 and a half sacks in a the season. They There's let him no get way. that we're in trouble. Right. And I, I mean, mean, big trouble. But that's the difference between this roster and last year's roster, maybe, is that they do have some options that right. they, can, they can float out there. And to your point, though, maybe they have fixed that a little bit, although it's on tape now. Right. Is all of the help that Dillard was getting from other offensive line. Basically, like – a couple seconds after the snap, if you're not blocking anybody and you don't have anyone to engage with, you're going to help him. Immediately. Like, don't second guess. Don't don't glance back and see if your man did something. Yeah. No, your man block. Go get him. Yeah. Pass go. Collect $200. Yeah, we Add to balance. it, uh, NPF has officially been ruled out for Sunday. NPF out. Okay. That's, yeah, that's cool. That's not a big surprise. No. Now, Kyle Phillips listed as questionable. So, 
does he give you the return game option there? That's a good question. Um, Look how we just dove into this. We I know really, we, ain't, like, we ain't playing around. We ain't playing around, y'all. No, nah, t- today's a busy Friday. It's Friday. We got to jump on it. Listen, jump up on it. Um, Titans, Colts, LSU at Missouri, Bama at Texas A and M, Vandy, Florida, UK at Georgia, Arkansas, Ole Miss, Oklahoma, Texas. Um, you've also got Cowboys at Forty Niners. Mm-hmm. All kinds of things going on um, today. Six one five seven three seven one zero four five. You want in at three HL one zero four five Friday. Edition, uh, Trash Talk Friday, Fried Day, if you want to come uh, hang out here. Presented by Spring Hill Heating and Cooling, SpringHillAC.com. You can watch the show live, YouTube, Facebook Live, Twitter, and Twitch. Twitch, please. The evident bank chat is open, so get that going. The (laughs) second location of Scoreboard Bar and Grill right here at Cedar Creek Marina. We'll be here until 6 o'clock. You got something, huh? Uh, Yes, we do. The injury report is officially out. So we mentioned the four that are out for the Titans. Everybody else is good to go for the Colts. DeForest Buckner is in, but Shaq Leonard is officially out. Woo. Uh, that's that's smart by them. I, I I knew that was gonna I knew that was gonna happen, man. Quiddy Pay is officially out. That's big. Uh, Bernard Raymond, big. who's their starting left <laughs> tackle, is officially out. Oh. And Jonathan Taylor is listed as questionable. Yeah, what does that mean? That's 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 that means that Zach Moss most likely is going to get your first team reps, and they're calling most likely throw Taylor in, in if they feel good about him. All right, My so go, go through that again. So, DeForest Buckner is what? All right, DeForest Buckner is in. He is a good to go, even with the back injury. But Shaq Leonard, their starting linebacker, he is out with a groin injury. He's the dog on that defense, mm-hmm. too. Quiddy Pay is out. Another dog. Bernard Raymond, who is the Colts' starting left tackle, is officially out. Bernard Raymond. And uh, Jonathan Taylor is listed as questionable. Yeah, what, are they, what do you think they do with Jonathan Taylor? I think you you work them back in. I think this is all for the Titans to have to um, game plan for him. I don't I don't think he's gonna play. I, I would be like, yes, in shape and everything. Yeah, he take care of his body as much as he can, and conditioning should be cool. But once you get out there and get a thud with them pads on, man, that adrenaline get going. That woo, y'all don't think you want that. You know what I'm saying? I I, w- I would like one more week of practice with him, and I'm hoping that also. So, but. I'm not playing Jonathan Taylor if I'm them. I think Zach Moss has been – I think he's been, he been solid. You know what I'm saying? So, I would roll with him. If you can, like your franchise guy, you're going to play him. But I don't want to just throw him out there. We saw what happened last year with Shaq Leonard when they threw him back out there, and that led to more problems. So, I think they're wise as far as keeping him out this week. That will be um, something good for the Titans as well and good for Shaq Leonard's body. So, Because it's going to be a physical game. It is. In order for the Titans to go out there and handle business, it's going to be physical. I, I wish Tier Tart would now. Like, I'm ready to see Tart get back to his self. You know what I mean? We came into the season thinking, man, this dude here, there's a, somebody going to have to pay him. And he got to get on the field to get paid. Look, I know Moss can get it done, but he's not striking the no. heart. No. He's not putting fear in your heart. Uh, not with a rush knee like that. Not Titans at all. number four in the NFL against the run, allow, allowing just 70 rush yards. Per game, and they've been phenomenal. Uh, they haven't given a team 100 yards in 10 games, and only once since the opener last season, even. So, um, Jonathan Taylor, a different deal. Now, Jonathan Taylor's been out for 10 months. Right. That's, and that's so, what I'm like, you're just going to make him active? That makes no sense to me. Mm. But now, having said that, maybe they trot him out there. Maybe he starts, runs for 100 yards. I don't know. But yeah. I would, I would lead toward he ain't playing. Man. Right. Like, why would you do that? Yep. Unless you really don't care about the player. Yeah, and they like, got to go care about him. Yeah, yeah go, ahead, go ahead. Go out there and rip up your hamstring. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Because that's, that's, that's what you're looking at, right? Like, it's soft tissue stuff. Play around with it you want to. If you've been out a long time and then you just go full speed, there's yeah. got to be a ramp up there. Now, maybe he has been ramping up. I don't know. And even if he plays, wouldn't it be a situation where it's like, I don't know, four or five carries? Yeah. To kind of see yeah. what you, to get you acclimated. I wouldn't even be. I wouldn't be surprised just getting them out in space, a little dump off pass, a little screen or something, just to get them out there in space, and not really running between the tackles like that. I was, yeah, but I could be wrong. I could be wrong. I, w- I would love to see. I'm sure the Titans are prepared either way, whichever one comes out there, because they got business to handle in Indy. It's going down, and it's personal a little bit for them, um, especially with Danico. We will uh, we'll spend a lot of time on that game. Obviously, uh, Keith Bullock will be here, and we'll talk with him a lot about this Titans-Colts matchup uh, and what it was like to play the Colts uh, and get that 
that rivalry game situation going. Mm-hmm. Um, so a couple of notes here. Uh, NFL betting notes, betonline.ag. The Giants are the only team in the NFL that are 0-4 against the spread, if you're looking for uh, some little nuggets. Uh, Bears got off the snipe. We'll get to that in just okay. a second. Rams, only team without an against the spread loss. They uh, win, excuse me. Only team without an against the spread win. They are 0-3-1. and All four Saints totals have gone under. So if you <laughs> want to think about that. Yeah, like that. Uh, in college football, the only teams that are 5-0 and against the spread – Oklahoma, Oregon, Penn State. <laughs> Jay Franklin's going to go for that, man. <laughs> yes, he is. He's proven that. And, I'm with it. And UNLV. Um, how about this? There are three teams that are 0-5 against the spread. Mm. UT San Antonio, 0-5 against the spread. I wonder, is that quarterback back? I don't know. Good question. Oh, uh, yeah. Because that would help. I don't know. Uh, Illinois, 0-5 against the spread. Oh, wow. And Georgia. 0-5 against the spread. And we rolled with them last year, boy. Yep. Been and the last with them two years, year. yeah. I think, they, I, think they, I think they get Kentucky pretty good this time. I think I'm getting I think defensively, they, offensively. Minus 14 and a half. I think they squeeze that run game. And then I think Devin Leary is a sitting duck in that pocket, mm-hmm. and he's not very good. Mm-hmm. And I think George, this will be like a Georgia game in the last couple of years where they just choke him out. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think. I, I, listen, one thing for sure. <laughs> like last week when I gave my analysis, yeah, I did right. bet it that that's way right. too. <laughs> that's all right. I but, bet the under, I think 40, what was it, 42? And a half, I think. Do you talking about this um, to, this weekend? Georgia, no, this weekend, Kentucky, I think it's 48. And under, 48 yeah, under 48. Under yeah, 48. I got it. I bet the under. Half, yeah. I got So I guess what? I went, I went and listened to Bet the Board this morning. It's good, isn't it? Yeah, this is real good. It's real good. So hopefully, I got my picks. I already got that in the in the tank. Three par slays ready to roll. Did you get the Brad Powers pick? Where I he did. Goes I most definitely five? did. Yep, I most definitely did. <laughs> I like that too. I like that. Utah State and Colorado State. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He messed around with the total, but uh, we're not going to give out their information. Nope. You, go, you yeah, go, got to listen. Yeah, you can go listen. Bet the board podcast. Go ahead and download that. And yeah. I'm telling you, man, you don't even have to be into sports gambling to enjoy that. No. Nah. It's all about the matchup and what you're going to see according to them in that game. And they, they go through all the analytics offensively, defensively for each group and kind of and play with how that works, and, and they're really good at it. Uh, Vanderbilt is 0-6 against the spread. Go to the swamp. Unless you're Slay and keep creating your own spread for Vanderbilt. Which, which, which I did. Then they're 2-4. and four. Which I did. <laughs> I did, but not that game. Oh, not so fast. 0-6 oh, <laughs> against the spread, but check this out. 6-0 and oh over the total. 6-0 and oh over the total for Vanderbilt. Over the total points in the game? Yeah, total points. Wow. They're 6-0 and oh going over. Okay, I'm going to have. LSU 5-0 and oh going over. LSU playing at Missouri, a uh, favorite on the road. We got there. a little conflict right there. It's funny, too, because, like, ESPN has gotten to the point now where anything they do in terms of, like, breaking down games, yeah. they also add at least some part of the betting element to it. But it's funny hearing some of the analysts that don't follow that stuff. Yep. And, like, I forget who it was. Um, somebody was talking about how, um, you know, Alabama's going into a hostile environment as an underdog and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, no, they're not. They're the favorite. They are the favorite. But you know what I mean? And, like, this guy, I wish I could remember who it was, spent, like, five minutes on how that was going to motivate Alabama that they were the underdog. And, and they're not. And they're not. <laughs> I get line. where you would assume that they were going right. on the road at Kyle Field against a good te- Texas A&M team, although with the backup quarterback, who also did beat Alabama two years ago right. uh, at Kyle Field. It's just that defensive line, man. Serious. Serious. And the lack of play from the Alabama offensive line. And they're active. Now, so. A&M's going to have to score is going to be the thing. All right, uh, when we come back, um, question for you. How did the Titans get that dub in Indy to get to 3-2? and two? That's the question. 615-737-1045, broadcasting live from Cedar Creek Marina, the second location of Scoreboard Bar and Grill on the water here on 3HL 1045 The Zone.
What's happening, good people? It is time to get to it. The fall has arrived, and you don't want to be the one, uh uh-uh, who has the issue with the HVAC with the first cold snap that you're going to see coming. Matter of fact, tonight. It's going to drop a little bit on you. So if you ain't in order, you need to get the Spring Hill Heating and Cooling on the line right now. Dial up Kevin and the fam, man, and make sure everything is rocking and rolling. They are the heating and cooling company that can take care of all your HVAC needs. They've done it at my home, and that's for sure. Spring Hill Heating and Cooling offers free service calls with their repairs. You hear that? Free. You don't beat that. Plus up to 18 months of no interest on repairs. So get with it now make sure you get in there you don't want to have that smell coming through your house like what is that you're looking around like oh it's weird and now the cold everybody freezing got blankets no man you want to be comfortable in your own home let spring hill heating and cooling make you that comfortable it's always going to work because they are trustworthy i put my name on it springhillac.com call them at a football game on Wednesday, and we broadcast live from the Grove, and we had a great time, and a lot of y'all came out there, and we cer- certainly appreciate that. Always enjoy seeing your happy, smiling faces. Uh, and we're going to do that again on Tuesday. Tuesday night on the 10th, MTSU will host Louisiana Tech, and we would love to see you out there again. We will be broadcasting live from the Grove, and it's a really cool setup. If you've never been, it's, a, it's an awesome opportunity for you. Uh, I know a lot of people on fall break next week, so – uh, an opportunity for you to uh, do some family uh, time together. And uh, you can get it done uh, at the Grove. Uh, people just – you just drive up, set up a tent, start tailgating with everybody else. They've got inflatables out there for the kids, tons of uh, grass area for kids to throw football and stuff like that, and you can come hang out with us. Uh, it's going to be a great time. That is Tuesday, October 10th, MTSU against Louisiana Tech. Go BlueRaiders.com slash tickets is how you get tickets. And you can do it online. Blue Raiders on a roll. Back-to-back bowl win seasons, gearing up for the 2023 uh, run through the conference schedule. Don't miss out on the Blue Raider Beer Garden inside the stadium featuring local breweries and an extended family fun zone. inside. That was a really formal handshake there, bully. Uh, don't miss out on that. Um, the uh, We experienced all that when we went on Wednesday night. Get your tickets. Be a part of the action. Go BlueRaiders.com slash tickets. That's go BlueRaiders.com slash tickets.
Three HL, 104.5 The Zone. Brent Dorty, Ron Slay. By the way, Ron Slay is in the building. I'm in the, building. I'm in the building. I'm in the building. I'm in the building. I'm in the building. Hey, I'm in the building. I'm in the building. I'm in the building. I'm in the building. Here. Right I'm in now. the building. I'm in the building. A lot of thought into my part slaves, too, for tonight. Baseball, tomorrow. Yeah. Two-part slate college football Saturday. I, well, I'm, I'm loaded. I there, ain't even playing listen, around with them. There are four baseball games tomorrow. That'll be yeah. That's, in addition to all this college football that we got going. I was I was iffy on that Minnesota Twins. Who the Twins play? I, I was iffy on that one. Um, the Astros. They play y'all, and I don't know what to do with y'all. Verlander's going. I know. I I know that. <laughs> but I, I, I man, y'all y'all put y'all almost put me in the hole, man. Yeah, but then they I started. With, but, then they, but, th but then you laid off, and then they won three in a row and won the division. So maybe it's me. I'm just leave alone. Now. <laughs> I'm, I'm, cool, I'm cool with that. They I were two be, and a half back with three to go. I could be on the other three games. Yeah, I'm cool with that. Okay. Uh, I get lost on baseball at this point, though, with football going on. So, yeah. like, catch me on a non Saturday, and I'll be good. Mutual agreement. <laughs> I will <laughs> keep up with it. Get it right. Uh, 3 HL presented by Spring Hill Heating and Cooling, SpringHillAC.com. The FM Bank chat is open. Twitter, uh, Facebook Live, YouTube, and Twitch. Twitch. Thank you, Hunk. Uh, Dawn Davenport is in Amherst, Massachusetts. Yeah. With a and she said it's actually warmer there. I think it's supposed to be 40 degrees here tomorrow night uh, for the low temperature. So um, it's actually warmer there. Look who is uh, has graced us with his presence. Keith Bully, Titans Yo, legend. Bully. Let's start. What up, Bully? Chilling, man. You know, I'm just doing what I do best, looking at this scoreboard <laughs> menu. <laughs> 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 Figuring out what I'm about to order. You lucked out last week in that they brought you the wrong wings that you didn't order, so you got to eat those and then order again. Yeah, and then um, the young lady was upset that I actually ate the ones that yeah, she brought. Like, I'm going I'm to eat what you bring me. Yeah. yeah. It's I'll like, try them both. It's like the house, man. I just sit here. You don't bring me anything. Um, hey, hey, how was Sunday, man? The Titans legend day for you. Sunday was cool, man. You know what? It, it started off great. Because um, we were on time. I, you know, I got three girls. <laughs> so. I, loved, I loved following your Insta feed. Yeah. Like, on the way to the stadium and all that stuff. Yeah, for sure. So, uh, we were on time. The girls don't want to be on the Insta feed either. Yeah, nah. <laughs> you know, my, my, my um, kids are at the point where I guess they got some clout and some status. And I don't. <laughs> and they don't, <laughs> don't want to be a part of yeah. uh, any of my Yeah, you don't have media. anything to do with that. <laughs> my wife has always been like that. Like, you know, even she's never really cared to be a part of my <laughs> social media stuff. So, I, I keep it like that. Yeah. You know, um, but I like to, of course, make the a part of it every time but it was cool man um the, the titans um community relations alumni relations josh Corey and his staff um, yeah josh does a great job yeah. so what happened you got to the stadium and what um they took us to no i did the show with mike keith and coach mac yeah they do a great job that's a nice little element they add to it so that's the pre-game show and then we went to the suite um they had a, a nice suite for us on the vid on the visitor side actually i went to um the in, on the field for a minute and it was cool i got to see tim shaw i got to see Rand. Yeah. um uh steven tulloch was there i saw telly uh, Ocho Cinco, but man, it was like 90 <laughs> degrees out there, man. You know what I'm saying? So I'm, after a while, I'm, I'm like, Josh, what am I doing here? Like, I'm just standing here. You know what I mean? So uh, in rotisserie. Yeah. So I just went up. To, <laughs> I went up to the to the suite and yeah. just chilled with the fam. Yeah. Um, Hainsworth came to the suite. Cool, um, cool. With his son, we watched it in. So my kids brought their friends to the game. My, my wife, my her cousin. So it was cool. And then in the third quarter, uh, I thought I was gonna be the person that put the sword in the. In yeah, the, in that's the, what I wanted to see. That always makes me nervous. That whole exercise because I keep thinking somebody's gonna just stab their own foot. I thought, yeah, you know what? <laughs> I thought I was gonna be a victim of that the first time that I had to do that. Um, Have you done it before, Bully? I had actually done that before, and um, I made sure to like straddle. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? So, but this one was straddle. <laughs> yeah. That, really, that work came yeah. up yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> so this one, um, uh, Caroline. Thanks to Caroline, she was the the greeter that works with the Titans. Um, she was like, look, um, Jarrell Casey broke the mic because he screamed so loud, I guess, the first time. So she was like, you really just have to use your regular voice. Everybody can hear it. And then when you start talking on the mic, and she was like, just walk to the middle of the, the end zone, and you start talking on the mic, you realize that everybody in the stands is hearing you. Yeah. And at that point, 
I don't even really know what I'm saying because <laughs> uh, there was no script. There was no, yeah, nothing yeah, yeah. to follow. So yeah. I did the, the, the can you, you dig want. it, you yeah. know what I'm saying, the Warriors. That gave me time to think about it. And then it was great that the um, uh, Titans were up big and the defense was there because, mm-hmm. you know, I could just talk my talk. Oh, it's a wrap, yeah. you know, blah, blah, blah. But then I was running out of things <laughs> to say. And I see Joe Burrow kind of just sitting there, like, looking like, man, come on, hurry up. <laughs> and I'm like, Joe Burrow, you're a great player, but not today. I, whatever I said. And then I seen um, Big Jeff, you know, standing there, seeing the, the crew. And I'm like, Big Jeff. And I know I was calling names out. And I didn't really re- realize this until the next day, until people were like, yo, were you, were you drunk? Because you were calling people out. I'm like, what are you talking about? Was I drunk? Like, yeah, I'm going to go out on the field drunk. drunk. Yeah, like, yeah. come on, man. Like, but uh, I was just doing what I did. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It was a good time, though. I wanted to see Bully with the, with the sword, though, because I, I, I pictured Bully already. You know what I mean? Doing like some kind of little maneuver with it, like yeah. handling that thing, then taking it and you know going in. I was like, you okay. know what I would have hit him with what? with the with the power of grace, yeah, yeah, yeah. like the He-Man. He-Man, yeah. He-Man. <laughs> I would have hit him with that. <laughs> Skeletor. Skeletor. Yeah. Ah. yeah, I love that. Now nah, it was cool, man. It was it was really cool, and then um, the fans brought the energy, um, and it was it was dope because um, look, when I played here. Former Titans come to the game. Eddie come to the game. He right, look, I'm in the game. Eddie George right there right. next to me, like, all right, come on. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just in street clothes, yeah. retired yeah. street clothes. So I haven't taken in a game since a high school game in that manner, that fashion. So that's what I enjoy the best was that one little series that I got to, like, be on the field mm-hmm. and kind of, like, see the defense do their thing yeah. and everything like that. You know, I guess um, that's how I've always taken in football games. Yeah. So, like, going to a game. It's it's whatever. Yeah. To me. So you you when you watch the game from that that perspective right there, sideline or end zone, you can see pretty much. Oh what's yeah. Going on. yeah, yeah, yeah. See. I can see. Me, I get to looking all over the place. Like, <laughs> what what this receiver doing? What yeah. this? like it's yeah. I nah, can, I can I follow. Catch I can really follow okay, the yeah. follow the action and yeah. that, you know I just kind of got a feel for it. What's the first thing you notice? You watch how like all the gaps are fit, um, stuff like that. Well, the first thing you notice is who's winning at the line of scrimmage. Yeah. Cause like yeah. said, and then you know. You're, you're noticing that, and then if it's a running play, if the defensive line has penetration or you could see a hole open. I honestly thought the Titans were in trouble after that first drive, and they uh, um, Cincinnati only got three. Only three yep. But on one of those runs, Joe Mixon had, I think it was like an eight, nine-yard run. Um, a couple of them, actually. Mm-hmm. I've seen Big Jeff going backwards. Yeah, I got seen, rolled up on one of them. <laughs> i seen safeties not yeah. filling. I'm like, oh, Lord. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> um, but it was cool that they held them to three, and then the offense came out and responded. So, um, yeah, that's the first thing I really see is that line of scrimmage play. And then after that, you just kind of follow the ball. Right. It's, so, in- it's interesting that first drive, 11 plays, 76 yards against the – against the Titans' defense, and uh, after that, the Bengals had eight drives, um, nothing else really, 120 yard, total yards in the last uh, three quarters, but um, Mixon was 6.5 yards per carry on the first drive and then 41 yards on 10 carries the rest of the way. Uh, but, uh, yeah, after that first drive, here it is, eight more possessions, 40 plays, 139 yards, 3.4 yards per play. Yeah, I mean, look, you know the Titans have a, a good defense. That's something you heard all off season, going into camp, preseason, all that stuff. Um, and, you know, you got guys flying around making plays. Thing, the difference with um, the Cleveland game was that the offense was making plays. You know, the offense was answering. You know, the offense seemed as if, you know, they had a, a game plan that they were able to, to stick with and keep – Cincinnati off balance, um, you know, obviously with the run in the pass and how they mixed up their play calling. I think that was huge. That was key. And, you know, the defense, you got to give them credit. They got off the field on third down and the offense was able to convert. Titans and Colts coming up this weekend. Uh, did these rivalry games, divisional games mean more to players or, or is it just the next game and try to keep everything in, in perspective? I mean, when there's something on the line, yeah, and I feel like there was always something on the line. Anytime, you know, I, there was either something on the line or we weren't very we weren't very good that year. You know, um, you know, I think there was only one year where it was just like a a walk, and I think that's when Peyton Manning was hurt that that one year, um, his last year with the Colts. But other than that, 
Yeah, man, especially um, that I spoke about it on um, Buck's uh, podcast, mm-hmm. you know, especially those early years. Um, but as I look back, man, like, we're playing against three Hall of Famers. Right. Yeah. Maybe four, maybe five. Right. You know what I mean? So if you would have told me that back then, like, yeah, let's let's go. I'll give you my best shot. You know, yeah. I, I would love that opportunity. And, um, you know, sometimes we matched up well. But if you think about it, um, and I guess you get, you definitely have to give credit to Bill Polian because he was always able to, you know, replenish that, that roster. You yeah. know, whether it was uh, Reggie Wayne or Pierre Garçon or – or uh, Brandon Stokely or, or Dallas had Clark. Dudes, didn't yeah, you yeah. know what I mean? So, um, and, yeah, yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Yeah, it's interesting how this uh, series has flowed, and you're right. I mean, it also helps to go from Peyton Manning to Andrew Luck. <laughs> um, yeah, I didn't, from, I didn't, but fortunately for me, I didn't, you, you know, didn't I wasn't. Luck. But then, like, the, the Titans, they weren't very good at that time either. You know, right. sometimes you're just not – a good football team and you don't match up. In a lot of those Andrew Luck years, the Titans just were outmatched. They were not good. There was a lot of different things going on with the organization, um, you know, ownership and all things of that nature. And so, look, the the Colts are down, and I very much believe in kicking people while they're down. Yeah, keep your foot <laughs> on their throat. Especially when they got an opportunity to get oh, you back sometime we, down I mean, the line. We talked about it last week. Like, Okay, Joe Burrow's got a calf injury. Does anybody feel sorry for him? Not at all. Not at all. You go get him, and, yeah, and that's exactly what they did. But um, do you remember anything specifically like weird about Peyton Manning? Because it's the reason why I ask that is Blaine's got this incredible story about how he was lined up with his right foot in front of his left foot or something, and he noticed that Peyton was looking at his feet. Yeah. And so then Blaine figured out like when I get when I'm lined up like this, I'm press bail or whatever it was, and then so he started to mix it up, and then. Peyton had to go to something else, but he thought that was weird that he noticed a little detail like that in game. Yeah, Peyton um, would notice um, all of the details. You know, uh, there was one year where the Cleveland um, Browns only lost to the Colts like 15 9. I think they made them kick like five field goals. So they played like a 15 9 game, and what they did defensively was just show a cover two shell. So they just had the two high safeties. Yeah. And, you know, on the snap of the ball, they roll into whatever they go into because Peyton was great at the pre-snap read. So that's what he was doing in his pre-snap read with um, Blaine. So it didn't make sense as a linebacker or anyone like that to, to bluff. Uh, maybe on third down when you show certain coverages. Uh, I remember and I, I remember the first year that I was a starter, we played against the Colts. We had a double dog blitz off the outside. Uh, nickel and Tank Williams came on the outside. I came inside, and the running back did what he was supposed to do. He blocked inside. Blocked inside. First. Um, yeah. Tank, you know, hit him big head, popped out. I scoop and score. High step from the thirty. You know, what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> um, athlete. <laughs> that being said, yeah, that play never worked again. You yeah. know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, Schwartz yeah. is like, oh, yeah. we'll put it, and then he tried it from the other side, and then Peyton. Any time he saw something out of the ordinary, he would like slow his countdown and. To make you move? Yeah, nah, just like because he kind of knows something's up. And then he's analyze. like, I'm not taking no chances. Hey, yeah, you know, yeah. move, shift the protection uh-huh. or anything like that. And um, what also what made their offense tough is, you know, the, there was an RPO when I was playing, run pass option, mm-hmm. which you see like Jalen Hurts does. And yep. you see the quarterbacks that um, – Anthony Lamar, Richardson. That Anthony, see that's what they'll Sunday. see this week. But yeah. the way that the – Colts ran their offense, they had that zone read and they ran everything off of it. So it'd be a long stretch play. Um, whereas a linebacker, you kind of have to commit. Um, and then the late last minute, um, you know, Peyton, Peyton will pull it. And that's, you know, they had that, they had a trap and they had a dive. Like I'm telling you, they're three plays and maybe a power off tackle, but everything kind of, when it came to their offense looked the same. So that's what made, um, Peyton in that offense so effective and so unique and you know uh, as a defense you either are you know better than them and we had some defenses where they couldn't mess with Hainsworth, mm-hmm. Van den Bosch, uh, mm-hmm. Tony Brown, Javon Kirsch you know what I'm saying that up front that interior is getting that push like yeah. I say it start up front um, and you know that's when we're going to see how we match up skill for skill but uh, you know other than that Peyton 
Peyton was the man. <laughs> I, <laughs> so I, were you. I, I want to know something about Bullet, man. When we come back, I know we got a break, man. But, but in the mind of a fighter, I, I love boxing. Mm-hmm. So the way you just talked about that, like Peyton would be a counter boxer. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like reading yeah. off that. I want to know when we get back, though. At, um, what what type of guy were you sitting in in the middle? Like were you a For defensive? Sure. You know what I mean? Were you on attack, making them adjust to you, or how did they go? We'll talk about that next. Also, more on this Titans Colts right there. Good matchup. Right there. And, and Bully's right. The Titans have won five in a row in the series. They've won four in a row against the Colts in Indianapolis, trying to extend that this weekend. Now a two-and-a-half point favorite on the road. Um, and we'll get you some injury notes and nuggets as well as we continue to broadcast live. 3HL live at Scoreboard Bar and Grill at Cedar Creek Marina. We'd love to see you out here. We'll be here until 6 o'clock. they got great food. Bully's about to order something. We'll be right back. Let's do it. 3HL 104.5 The Zone. What's happening, good people? Brentwoodjewelry.com, 7012 Church Street East, located in the heart of Brentwood, just off Franklin Road, man. Exception, exceptional style, exceptional deals, always and every day for over 50 years. Open Tuesday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Listen, man, whatever you're trying to get fulfilled, engagements, anniversaries, um, just birthdays, surprises, whatever it is, man, you can go there and get it taken care of. I went there. When it came to the engagement, I had to get it locked down, man. They took care of me, got me in and out. Brentwood Jewelry, I I mean, they're here to help you pop the question if need be. Let them help you take the stress out of it, selecting the perfect engagement ring, and you can build it from the base all the way up to the diamond, man. It's real cool to watch them do it. And if you don't know what you're doing, listen, they're going to walk you through it. I ain't have a clue. So I just say, hey, man, help me out. And they, they took care of everything, got me in and out. And, hey, it was a success. Watches also. But you know all that. Just get in there. Go check them out. Brentwood Jewelry, 70 Church, 7012 Church Street East, man. Excellent, excellent style. Man, you need to get out in that lawn and get it going. And um, my guys at Diggins Surf and Landscape Supply can help you keep that lawn looking better than anyone's lawn in the neighborhood. DiggitSupply.com is the website. Check out what they have for you. Multiple locations across the Middle Tennessee area. And my guy Trey Hartzook is with us now to talk with you about more. Trey. Hey, Brent, man. Hey, now is the time to air and overseas and get that lawn really whipped into shape because fall's the time. I know throughout the summer – Things can get a little bit repetitive where you just seem like, well, I'm putting some fertilizer down, not a whole lot's happening, they can't really see any results. Well, in fall, you can really renovate that lawn from not having much to having a great, pristine, fescue lawn. And we can help you with that. At Dickens Turf and Landscape Supply, we have turf experts at every single location that want to help you get that lawn whipped into shape. doesn't matter if you have 0.3 of an acre or 33 acres. We have a turf plan for you. And it's not just the grass. So we have some great custom-blended organic and synthetic fertilizers to help your lawn get whipped into shape. Stop in to see us. Conveniently located all over Middle Tennessee. Got locations in Nashville, Cool Springs, Hendersonville, Murfreesboro, Bellevue, Rimbalama, Mount Julia, and Franklin. Open up at 7 a.m., closing at 4.30 p.m. Monday through Friday, 8 to 12 on Saturdays. If you can't get a hold of us, check us out online, dickensupply.com. So this is a small bird, too, for that's someone right. that's never mm-hmm. seen a Bob yeah. White before. It's this little round softball. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> you could, I wouldn't. They're not much bigger than my fist, you know. Um, they've got little legs, but they're a ground-nesting, ground-dwelling bird. If they never have to fly in their life, they wouldn't, right? They just do that to get away from hawks and owls, for the most part, or hunters. What they need is um, largely herbaceous plant communities, right? So they need wildflowers. They need a small proportion of you know grasses that don't need to you know vast grasslands right i need stuff that most people would call weeds those are providing good brood cover good nesting cover um, a lot of insects right that's that's what chicks need to develop early bridgestone firestone is a quail focus it is focal area so tell us a little bit why yeah you know it's largely because there are very few places that have wild quail in the state of tennessee anymore and there's dozens of different factors that lead into that right everybody wants to jump right to predators but it's a it's a habitat issue right mm-hmm. it's a it's a landscape change whether that we're talking about development or whether we're talking about fire not being on the landscape anymore or fields and young forests progressing into closed canopy forest right so the farm just by nature of it being an open landscape that's been maintained that way has held on to some birds 
and compared to most other places in the state, um, we're one of the very few. On top of that, you know, the potential for growing that population, it's higher here than just about anywhere else. Three HL presented by Spring Hill Heating and Cooling, SpringHillAC.com. Go ahead and uh, reach out to them. Get your HVAC unit checked before the cold weather hits. Better hurry like, up, though. Like I said, it's going to be 40 tomorrow night, is what they said. Dang. Mm hmm. Boy, I, I, I like it when it get like that because my man cave, it don't hold no heat. So it'll be good and cold. Yeah. You got to have them blankets to come in there. Yeah, you ain't got no blankets, no tough skin. You can't come in there. That keeps people like out. Like that's, that's bingo. <laughs> <laughs> bingo. Red Morty Rod Slay. <laughs> And Keith Bullock broadcasting live from Scoreboard Bar and Grill at Cedar Creek Marina. We love coming out here. Be here until 6 o'clock. KB will be here as long as he wants to. Mm-hmm. Bully hanging. You had, a, you had a question for him. I did, man. Before the break. So the way he broke it down with, with Peyton, uh, like I'm a big boxing fan, so I'll, that's a game that quarterbacks will play. You know what I mean? Try to tip things off. I think the same thing for boxers when they're trying to pick up things um, throughout the fight. So I wanted to know, you being in that, that situation, pretty much the quarterback for the defense, would you do things to do that, like to tip, to get tips from the offense, or were you more of an attack guy or like kind of like Mayweather, defensive, read off you, counter type guy? Yeah, I mean, that's a good question. So based off my film study and the formation that they come out in and where they line up, um, you know, where they start off usually isn't going to where isn't where they end up, especially right. if they use motion. So there's only so many formations that they could do with certain people yeah. on the field. So I'm prepared for any of those six to seven plays, um, you know, that they can run. Obviously, yeah. they know the snap count. They know the actual play that they're running. So as a defender, linebacker, I'm always attacking yeah. because if I'm sitting back and waiting, uh, then I'm getting punched in the face. Right. You, know you don't saying? want them to dictate. Yeah, nah. To you. I'm, I'm dictating. Yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. you know, I want all okay. the smoke. You know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so at the end of the day, you know, I need them to worry about me. You right. know, I need th that offensive tackle um, who has to. You know, like for example, with the Colts. Right. Um, they're running stretch away. Mm -hmm. Some teams like to use their tackle to get that backside linebacker, seal them off. Yeah. Well, they can't get me with the backside linebacker, I mean with the tackle because yeah, I'm yeah. too fast. Right. Okay, they use the guard. They can't get me with the guard because he's yeah. going to try and gut, cut me mm -hmm. and I'm going to 
jump over him. Yeah. So now they have to start using their center. So once you start affecting the way yeah. the offense has to play you as an individual, that's what's up. So for my thing, my thing was always about, you know, I know the players got, you know, if they're mm-hmm. not talking about me on Wednesday in their meeting room, um, you know, in their scouting report, yeah. it's going to be a long day for everybody. <laughs> that, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Because yeah. I'm always going to be prepared and I'm always on attack. Yeah. I'm always attacking. Um, nice. On the run, I'm coming downhill. Um, I'm a man-to-man. I'm playing man-to-man in my zones. I know where to be. Like I told you about um, Aziz Alshire mm-hmm. before mm-hmm. he was making plays. Yep. He was always in the right spot. Right. You know, so yes, sometimes – a quarterback might want to do that or go there, but if you're in the right spot, and I say that about myself a lot, um, you know, sometimes I'll be too fast on the trigger yeah. because they're already looking mm-hmm. for me. So mm-hmm. I jump something. Uh, we're not going over there. He's over there. And, yeah. like, you know, um, back to Peyton Manning, I feel like that's the respect that he had for me as a player because he wasn't trying me like that. Like, no. you know what I mean? Like, he knew um, our personnel who we had, um, where our weaknesses were, what we needed, what he needed to do. And I was talking about the strength of our D-line at one point. So what Peyton would do, they come out first game, first series um, of the game, they go hurry up, yeah. hurry up offense, hurry yeah. up offense to get Albert tired, get yeah. Albert out of the game, get our D. So they get our second rotation of D-line. Right. And then now they can methodically run, this you know what up. I'm saying, their, their offense and, and so on and so forth. So, uh yeah, those hmm. are the type of things that <laughs> that go on the, the intricate details yeah, that people don't think about. Yeah, yeah, the game. Like some guys just going out there and okay, they line up and they just go. It don't work like that. Right. You could do that, but you're not gonna. And there are not, players that do that. Yeah, and that's yeah. fine. And that's yeah. fine. They, there are some good players that they're probably just decent. So right. Yeah. I liked it. You know, it's That's interesting. Dope. While you were talking about that, I, I remember a play that happened in the Colts game. I think it was last year, maybe the year before, uh, where Coach Mack was talking, or Greg, Greg Cosell was talking about it. Uh, David Long Jr. actually had an interception against the Colts, and he was in the yeah. wrong place. Yeah. Right. Yep. So, like, the quarterback, I forget who it was at the time, like, didn't, so, didn't expect him to right. be there. Yeah, yeah. And so, like, it's weird to think that, like, accidents happen that actually lead to big plays. Yeah, that's – like, I remember – Nathaniel, that's what Nah, was. for sure. Like, so, I remember the prime example when I was playing with the Giants, I didn't play that much. So, yeah. I had a lot of time to just kind of <laughs> watch the game. But, yeah. like, my game had, like, uh, evolved so far that I was telling Jesse Armstead, who was a coach on the sidelines, I'm like, every Bad time – Yeah, he was. was. Oh, my. Yeah, he was. Yeah. He, um, yeah. Every time they ran um, play action front side, the quarterback turned blind and threw the comeback um, backside. So without any thought. Without right. any yeah. thought because yeah. we had our – we're cover three and our corner has to right. respect that 15-yard comeback. Right. So, me, I finally get in the game in, like, the third, fourth quarter. I've been seeing that. I was just telling Armstead, like, look, this, they keep running this Let's play. This. Man, as soon as I seen f- play action front side – I ran backside, he threw it, and I made a pick. Yeah. And then, of course, first thing the coach says, you're not supposed to be over there. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I know, coach, but I just felt it, man. Yeah. I, just, I just felt it. But, um, yeah, that's just how, how things go. So a lot of times you can throw quarterbacks off. Uh-huh. Um, and, you know, Troy Palomalu, like guys like that, that was a part of their game. They were mm. so instinctive to just take chances. Junior Seau, another yeah. one like that. When I took chances – you know, definitely here with the Titans. Anytime I took chance, I would get burned. So yeah. I just, you know, <laughs> played as close to the T as yeah. possible. Coming up uh, in yeah. the 4 o'clock hour, we're going to ask you a couple of things. Uh, number one, how do you deal with Anthony Richardson, rookie quarterback? He's completing just 57% of his passes, but we've all seen the highlights, and we know what he's capable of. And he's a big man that can get down the field as well. Uh, and then this whole Jonathan Taylor situation, he hadn't practiced in 10 months, suddenly out there this week. And now they're, they're saying, well, he could play. Um, we'll get your take on that, too. Titans Colts coming up uh, 12 o'clock on CBS. You can catch all of the action right here on 104.5 The Zone. Titans Radio Network has you covered. Uh, when you come down here to Scoreboard Bar and Grill at Cedar Creek Marina, number one, the weather is phenomenal. That breeze coming off that water it is, is. is just outstanding. Uh, but you have a chance to sign up and win things. Kiss tickets, Nashville SC tickets. You can sign up for your chance to win Tennessee and Texas A&M tickets. Those tickets will be given away at one of the two scoreboard locations on Saturday. And you can try to beat Brent and Slay is what it says here. Two. Picking games against us. Did they, did they, win, did they win this week? Bob. 
Okay. Oh, look, Bob. Here we go. You gotta, you gotta we go had this Bob. conversation last week. She was like, "You want me to tell tell you?" And we're like, "No, let, let, let Bob, Bob do, do his it. job." Yep. <laughs> and there he goes. After we ask him, um, Oklahoma at Texas, LSU at Missouri, Notre Dame at Louisville, Alabama at Texas A&M, Titans, Colts, Cowboys, 49ers, Chiefs, Vikings are the games. Pick against us. Mm-hmm. Your chance to win two hundred fifty dollars in scoreboard prize pack. Um, Titans, Colts, talk. Going on. We'll get some college football later. Uh, Mark Mariani out today. He is under the weather. So Come on, Moonshine. Prayers up for Moonshine. He just needs a, a lot of bourbon, I think, is what the answer, <laughs> answer is. And uh, so uh, we'll be rooting for him. Uh, more 3HL next, 1045 this time. Buddy Alla Carpet One is here to keep you comfortable at home with the cozy up to carpet flooring sale. Visit our friends at Buddy Allen Carpet One now through November 6th to get big savings on carpets of every style, pattern, and texture. Need a little financing help? Enjoy zero interest if paid in full within 18 months. Stop by the store in Donaldson today to get details and guidance from the flooring experts. Visit BuddyAllenCarpet1.com for details or just stop by the store in Donaldson. 2405 at Lebanon Pike, 615-883-3289. Or get all the information, buddyallencarpet1.com. All right, you want to buy a new house and you need cash instead of, you know, losing every single house you maybe put an offer on because you got to wait for your current house to sell. Well, call Loan Pronto and let them fix that. They do it with a dream, dream home bridge loan. This is what they call it. 615-499-5780. And this is how it works. Tap into the equity in your house, get the cash you need, make a clean offer on that new home, and you have the cash to cover the down payment. You can get the cash in a matter of days and very little paperwork. Usually no appraisal is needed. So you go after your dream home, hence the dream home bridge loan. And no contingency in place. And when your current house sells, the bridge loan completely disappears. Don't put off your dream. Call them now, 615-499-5780, LoanPronto.com. I have used Loan Pronto. They're awesome. They'll take care of you. 615-499-5780, Loan Pronto, Equal Housing Lender, NMLS, 1661781, subject to lender approval. Forty years ago, we opened our doors with one mission in mind. We'll be right back with the top ten songs of 1983. To sell quality American-made vehicles at a fair price. You have arrived. And we've loved every minute of the ride. Celebrating 40 years of Two Rivers Ford.
Good afternoon from the scoreboard bar and grill here at Cedar Creek Marina. I'm Joe Hung. That final injury report for the Titans and Colts is out. And speaking of out, so is Tier Tart and Traylon Burks. Luke Gifford is out as well Is MPF. They have all officially been out for or named out for the game. Now for the Colts, though, names that you need to be knowing, Shaq Leonard, as well as Quiddy Pay and Bernard Raymond, all three obviously starters for the Colts. All three are listed as out. And Jonathan Taylor is now listed as questionable going in to Sunday's game. For all your foundation repair and waterproofing needs, you need to visit USSTN.com. Breaking news at once in your home for the Vols. The flagship station for your Tennessee Titans, as well as home to 3HL. This is 104.5 The Zone. Three HL 1045 the zone Friday edition. Trash talk Friday. It's also what? Fried day. There's some people getting fried on the lake out here. Cedar Creek Marina is where we are. Scoreboard bar and grill is uh, where we are doing the show today on a Friday. Yeah, hey, you gotta be right here doing the show, man. You gotta have something in your hand. And that's a drink, my brother. There are people with drinks in their hands here. And it's, it's funny, man. Like, uh, come like 5 o'clock, this place is packed. Oh, it's going to be rolling. They open around 3.30 on Fridays. And it's going to be extra cool tonight. That's why you see they already got the tarp. What is it? What you call this? Tarp? Yeah. yeah. Like, you plastic, got, plastic, yeah, the plastic windows. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's you cool. Go. You got, already got that down, so. It's my second time out here. I got a little uh, little duck off now next, <laughs> <laughs> next summer for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Bring this the kids right here. out here. Uh-huh. It's right. that kind of tarp, like, if you see it in a movie, like, on the carpet, don't stand on it. No, nah, without question, because you know, something got, bad's about to happen. It's to for you. use. Ar yeah, Arlo sent us a message too, yo. He told us, um, "What did Arlo say?" Arlo said, "Man, hold it down for me at the marina." And I thought about this because Bullet just said it. He said, "I'm in Costa Rica, but Whoa. the key, the keys are in the boat. Y'all have fun." So, <laughs> wow. You know, you I like, hey, I don't know Arlo, but I like Arlo. <laughs> just gave oh. access to the boat, baby. If we want to just go you, jump on it. You need to like there. Are, there are certain people in the Nashville area that you need to know. He's one of them. Arlo is one of them. Arlo is definitely. <laughs> Yeah. Three HL presented by Spring Hill Heating and Cooling. Appreciate y'all being with us. SpringHillAC.com. You can watch the show live, YouTube, Facebook, live, Twitter, and Twitch. Brent Doherty. Ron Slay is in the building. I'm in the the building. Starting I'm in the building. No protocol. On the water. Engaging the no turn roof it up, protocol. Baby. Yeah. This show ain't got no roof. In T minus three. Oh, they need to hear it in the back. Two, oh, it turn it up. Oh, one. Okay. Turn. Welcome, Ronald Sanders. Turn up. 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 <laughs> Big dog can put it down. <laughs> yeah, don't cheat me. Uh, Chicago Bears snapped their 14-game losing streak with a win over the Washington Commanders last night, 40 to 20. Justin Fields, 15 to 29, 282 yards, four touchdowns. In his last two games, Fields, 43 to 64. That's 67 percent. 617 yards, eight touchdowns, one interception, a 131.3 passer rating in the last two. Meanwhile, Sam Howell, the Washington Commanders quarterback, getting sacked at a historic pace. Hal has been sacked 29 times Sorry. through five games. That's third most all time through five behind one guy, David Carr's 30 and 20. <laughs> That's wild, man. And <laughs> David Carr's on. 31 in 2002. Right. <laughs> David Carr, by the way, <laughs> played 94 games in the NFL. He was sacked 267 times. Hey, you know what, man? Did you get him? I have 19 career sacks. Five of them are freaking <laughs> David Carr. <laughs> Got a little Five car, of them man. are against David Carr. Got a little car. I have more career interceptions than I have sacks. <laughs> Five of them are against David Carr. <laughs> Got to love it. Hey, you Colts. need people like that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Titans Colts coming up. Uh, injury report you might have heard, uh, Hunk, at the top of the hour. Out for the Titans wide receiver, Traylon Burks. Defensive lineman, Tier Tart. Linebacker, Luke Gifford. NPF, Nicholas petit Frere is out. Uh, we'll see what they end up doing with him. My guess is he'll be back next week, but we'll yeah. see. I mean, he was supposed to miss six weeks. That might have been what he was counting on. I don't know. <laughs> 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 
Can you imagine, <laughs> like, like, hey, man, you're going to miss six weeks. So, like, you ramp up your rehab and all that. T- not rehab, but you ramp up yourself yeah. for that six weeks. And then oh, they go, man. hey, man, you're eligible now. You can practice Monday. I mean, I was laughing because, <laughs> I was laughing because, like you say, he ramped up all this stuff. He's like, man, I'm coming back next week. Let me get this last little week yeah. of vacation. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's yeah. like, now nah, you're up. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. I wasn't even ready. <laughs> right, exactly. Ready. That's what I was laughing yeah. at. You take a minute to get your mind right. <laughs> Maybe he was in Costa Rica, too. I don't know. <laughs> like, That's why I was laughing. <laughs> <laughs> that is funny. Uh, Kyle Phillips, uh, questionable. We'll see oh, God. what else is uh, oh, coming there. Oh, my God. And Peter He's Skaronsky. working back, Willie. Oh, working my back, God. <laughs> Peter Skaronsky, they may get something out of him. Yeah, you know, the f- hey, Peter Skaronsky, man, you know, Representing like a real first round draft pick. I like that. Get, get out. You know, you had a, what was it, appendectomy? Yeah. Oh, I got it right. Hey, it go. burst. Luckily, it burst? luckily, he was at the hospital. He thought he had po- food poisoning. Well, you know what? The most that I've heard about Peter Skaronsky since he got drafted was about his appendectomy. I messed yeah, it up this yeah, time. Yeah, you got it, though. It's, it's right you know down. what I'm saying? Yeah, so that yeah. means he's doing a great job and they need him back up in there. Yeah. You know, uh, who'd you say? Kyle Phillips? Yeah, man. man. Look, I, look, I honestly believe that Kyle Phillips could have a great NFL career. Okay. But Kyle Phillips cannot stay healthy, man. He can't stay on the field to Kyle, have a great hey, man. career. Kyle, Kyle Phillips, I saw him in Kroger the other day. I, 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 I stepped to the <laughs> side because I didn't want to touch don't him. Don't get too not, close. Don't get too close. <laughs> nah, I'm just playing. You don't want to be the reason. Now, he's a good player, man. I just, I'm making that just because now is the time where the Titans need all their players. Yeah. You know what I mean? And we get pump faked so much by Kyle Phillips. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And I don't mean to stay on him. Right, you know, right, when right. he's out there, he does some right. things. But what's it going to be? Because I, I tell you what, um, from the school that – uh, Mike Vrabel is from Ohio State, Pittsburgh, New England. Yeah. I don't necessarily know how much more of a string uh, yeah, yeah, Kyle yeah. Phillips yeah. got. You know what I mean? And I don't know. This is just me on right. the radio guessing. Right. But, uh, yeah, I don't think you can. What? The old saying is you can't make the club if you win the tub. Yeah, ain't no way. Ain't Kyle, no way. Kyle Phillips is using that Irish spring. So, you, <laughs> <laughs> so you, you think that at least getting short, Bullet Will. All right, so all right, you got another one. You talked about first-round draft picks. Uh, Traylon Burks. Yeah, he, he, hey. MIA right now, too. Phantom, so. I call him the Phantom Menace right now, <laughs> man. Yo, he, he could be out there. He could yeah. be a menace when he's yeah. out there, but he a lot of yeah. Phantom work. Yeah. Sometimes when he's out there, it's still a Phantom. Yeah. Like, look. Um, it's unfortunate of, for him because he had – everybody had talked about how big of an offseason he had had yep. and how in shape he was, and he stayed here to work through all of that <laughs> stuff that he dealt with last year. And here and here we are. He's not playing. He's got six receptions <laughs> for, for 99 yards on the season. Man, that's Swiss cheese, man. You don't want to hear any of that, <laughs> Man, like, look, talk me to death, man. Yeah. Talk me to death. <laughs> yeah. Because, and I say as a first-rounder, you get your year to get acclimated. Right. Get through everything you need to, to get through. But there's a higher – there's more of an expectation. And, you know, when I feel like – like you said, trailing, he's working through his injuries right. and all of these things. But look, man, you were doing that last year. So yeah. we're in the same situation uh, that we're in this year. Last year, it was uh, Robert Woods who yep. had to pick up most this of the right. load. Yep. Now, at least D Hop is in better shape. And now, when I say better shape, not coming off of ACL, yeah. um, right. is more, you know, football ready. Um, didn't have a high workload last year, but he's not coming here to necessarily be the number one guy. Mm-hmm. He can be that. That's why they drafted Traylon Burke. So that's why I just feel like, you know, um, it's easy to get on Ryan Tannehill. It's very easy. He yeah. makes it easy sometimes, yeah, you know yeah, what I'm too. saying? Yep. But at the same time, <laughs> Give me some help. Uh, yeah, for sure. Get a man some help. The guys that he's relying on, um, you know, you always got to bring up AJ because they got – but you could go back to Corey Davis too, yeah. you know. At least yep. Corey Davis got out there and, like, showed, yep. some, showed, showed enough right. that the Jets felt worthy enough to pay him. And, you know, it's a long season. Uh, but, yeah, I'm going to need some more out of uh, Traylon Burks when he gets healthy yeah. and Kyle Phillips when he gets healthy because it's not fair um, to every week when the Titans do bad to go to Tannehill yeah. and the old line. Like, fruit. yo, there's some more accountability that needs to be taken. Speaking of DeAndre Hopkins, Titans wide receiver DeAndre Hopkins caught four balls last week for a game high of 63 yards. Hopkins is tied for the most third down conversion receptions in the AFC. Nice. Clearly, Tannehill targeting him on big play opportunities. And, 
man, he's been good. It's funny, too, like in the – more talking points in the offseason. Oh, they don't need DeAndre Hopkins. He's too old. Like, you see how free agent wide receivers work out. My man's been yeah. good, man. He's yeah. been really good, man. Yeah. When they call his number, he's, he's answered the call. He's yep. answered the bell. I like to see them take more shots when they get in that 30, Same. 40 intermediate area because that's the area you could – kind of throw it up to him and let him make a play. Once you get into the red zone, green zone, yep. 20 to 10, you're shrinking the field a little bit. And, um, you know, it's a higher – it's a it's – a, it's a harder, you know, success rate when you yep. throw, like, fades and stuff mm-hmm. of that and, and of those nature. But if you get him with, like, 25, 30 yards, he already showed that he can get a step on yeah. these wide res- on these defensive backs, put him in position to make plays because right now – him and uh, Chris Moore are the guys uh, yeah, in, the, in the wide receiver room, and they both 30. Colts have lost six <laughs> so consecutive long. games on their home field. They haven't won a home game in 51 weeks. It's been almost a year. Cry me a river. <laughs> <laughs> but remember Same how the dominant y'all. they used to be at home, and now like, Oh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> I remember that. Hey, I remember Jeff Fisher. We're going out there kicking three onside kicks in a row. <laughs> and, like, in the, and then the score was like 24 to 21, like at the end of the first quarter. And these fools is like, oh, it's close. Nah, baby, we conceding right now. Yeah, yeah. And Peyton Manning turned that on, and it was, you know, I think they only beat us by 30-something. But, yeah, yeah, I've been on the other end of that. So that's why I say, man, I feel nothing for nobody. (laughs) I'll feel bad for, you know, these guys, like, when they're in there, like, losing streak and all those things because I've been a a part of those things. But – I don't feel it as, as, as if I was a player. Like, right. I don't feel it like right. Big Jeff is yeah. feeling it yeah. or yeah. Kevin Byard is feeling it. But, yeah, yeah I, I can empathize. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know that journey. <laughs> yeah. Uh, real quick, off topic, we were talking about that, uh, that London game coming up. It's uh, Jacksonville and Buffalo, and Buffalo is a five-and-a-half-point favorite in that. The interesting situation here is – that for the first time a team stayed over there. Yeah. And it's playing back-to-back weeks. So the Jaguars had, have been there. Obviously, they played last weekend over there. I saw one of their players said earlier in the week that it should be an advantage, at least like from a player perspective, because it takes a few it takes a few days. And Slate, you mm-hmm. were talking about this. It takes a few days for your body to get acclimated to that trip over there. And the Bills arrive Friday. They play on Sunday. Yeah, that's, so that's, that's three days. Tough. And that's, Jacksonville's been there. That is tough, man. You look at it. You 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 go out to you go out to um you go out to warm up and you out there trying to get that second win. So you warm up real hard, get 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 ready to roll, ready to roll, and then it's like, hold on, man, what are we doing? I can't I can't get right. How can I, I what am I supposed to do? I can't get my breath or anything. And then that's when the advantage happens, man. I'm telling you, like it is real. When you get off the plane. You you can you can go out there. I've get out, gotten off the gotten off the plane and went and played the game. Yeah. Those next two days, I need them to get back right. Then the first day of practice, you get your legs back under you, so forth and so on. So about four or five days, then you're ready to roll. Jacksonville should be able to jump on them. And the longer that game goes, the worse it is for Buffalo, in my opinion. In yeah, my I, opinion. I agree with you, Ron. Um, Jacksonville has been over there. They're already acclimated. They've pretty yep. much been living there. And yep. the Bills getting off the plane on Friday, mm-hmm. <laughs> hitting the turf, hitting the ground running. It's going to be it's gonna be tough. That's tough, man. That's tough. Derrick Henry has owned the Colts. Got some numbers for you to back that up when we come back, especially in Indianapolis. Uh, we'll talk about that next. Uh, Brett Doherty, Ron Slake, Keith Bullock with us at Scoreboard Bar and Grill. That's the food. The second – you see it coming? The, oh, no. No, the, no, no, no. <laughs> no, you don't. The second location, Scoreboard Bar and Grill, this one on the water at Cedar Creek Marina. We'll be here until 6 o'clock. Come by and see us, have some food, some drinks, watch some sports talk. Come meet us. We'll be here. 3HL 1045 The Zone. What is happening, good folks? Man, your guy Ron Slate right here, man. I got to let you know about Superbook Sports. Yes, go on and dive in. Go download the Superbook Sports app. And so they know I'm sending you that, man, why don't you use this promo code that we came up with? Uh, it's something like Slay. It's L-A-Y, real easy to do. Your first time betters, here it is. It's the first bet bonus. You win or lose, you're going to get a match up to $250 with the promo code SLAY. So hustle on over there, download it, and use it. Even if you don't download it, just go to superbook.com. You can do the exact same thing. Still get paid. Football, baseball, 
Um, you got hockey about to crank up, basketball about to crank up, everything. We're in that season, people. You want to go on and dive in and go and get this little extra 250 that they're giving away. People don't give away a lot of things, especially – the books, yes. So why don't you take advantage of it? The most trusted name in Vegas. Go on and dive into it. Visit Superbook.com for terms and conditions. You got a gambling problem, don't call me. Call them, 1-800-889-9789. Book it. All right, if you are like me, when you do something in your house or you need somebody to come fix something, maybe you need replacement windows and doors, uh, I always ask around to see who people have used because I want real reviews. I want to hear somebody tell me what it was like to work with a company. Well, that's exactly what I did when I needed new windows and doors in my house and townhome, and Pella Windows and Doors of Nashville kept coming up. So I called them, had them come out, Scheduled a free consultation, fell in love with them, and the rest is history. There you go. Got my new windows and doors from Pella Windows and Doors of Nashville. And uh, I'm here to be your source to let you know that they did a phenomenal job. Here's the deal. Their process of an installation allows them to warranty their work. So they back everything up with a 10-year labor warranty. Leading in the industry, Pella Windows and Doors of Nashville. And this is the other thing. They have the staff put in place to support you, the customer, to make sure that they can show up, they can do uh, exactly what they you want, what you need, and do it right. Tell them Dawn sent you and schedule your free consultation. Check out their limited-time special offers at PellaNashville.com. Forty years ago, we opened our doors with one mission in mind. Right back with the top 10 songs of 1983. To sell quality American made vehicles at a fair price. You have arrived. And we've loved every minute of the ride. Celebrating 40 years of Two Rivers Ford.
3HL 1045 The Zone. Brent Doherty, Ron Slay, Keith Bullock with you. Scoreboard Bar and Grill, Cedar Creek Marina. It is an awesome day on the water. <laughs> Slay Dog needs some food. Hey, man, I'm telling you, man. Like, oh, man. I'm telling you, I ain't been this hungry oh, in a long time, dog. Like, I, 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 listen, man, I got up about 6.30, got Ron ready for school, got me some nice little healthy cereal so I ain't get no sugar, you know what I mean? Good, Ooh, put some little honey down. on it. Yeah, man. So then I got the lunchtime after I took my nap. I was like, I was going to eat. I said, no, nah, I'm going to wait. I ate me some peanut butter crackers. You know what I mean? So I'm, hey, I'm you looking forward to cheating yourself. You cheating me? yourself I am, trying bro. to stick to that diet. Nah. You're doing a great job, but. Bully you know, and I were sitting here watching you just walk around. Like, you just look so dejected. Dog, because I'm Bully's looking like, for food. That sugar level is slow. <laughs> like it's, it's, Bully's like, dog. Slade on is about to be a healthy scratch. Hey, man, I'm telling you, dog, I'm, I'm going to tap out. I'm going to tap right out. Like, if somebody would throw something in the water, like a piece of chicken, I would dive in and go get it. Like, I'm down. <laughs> Not before them fish, them fish jumping out there. Yeah, we're going we to wrestle for them, buddy. You, like, one of them going to get eight. Titans Colts coming up this weekend. It is Colts Hate Week. That is for sure, yeah. at least for the fan base. Who cares? Uh, Titans running back Derrick Henry has owned the Indianapolis Colts in his last 12 games against the Colts. The King has 252 carries for 1,284 yards and seven touchdowns. That's 5.1 yards per carry, 107 yards per game. He has six 100-yard games in his last seven games mm. against Indianapolis. In Indianapolis, the King is 5-1, and one, having won his last four games in Indy. 125 carries on the road there, 634 yards, five touchdowns, 106 Jeez. per game, 5.1 yards per carry. Man, you know what, man? I would have loved to have an opportunity to play against Derrick Henry just because of, like <laughs> – Said no one ever. I love yeah, it. Yeah, nah, go. just because, like, I always want to play against the best. Yeah, you right. know what I'm saying? Right. So, like, like, Barry Sanders, Walter Payton – uh, who, whoever, like, I just want the opportunity just to see where I match up yeah, because yeah. I no, feel I like, you know, I feel like obviously they're Hall of Famers, yeah. but sure, I'm a Hall of Famer that's too. That's that's my, that's that's my, I'm my, with like, you. What you talking about? I'm like, what's you. up? I'm you know, um, and, you know, to have the opportunity to play in the era that I played in because uh, we was out there hitting. I seen something um, – on like Twitter or X, whatever they call it, there's yeah. something about the era from like I think it was like '95 to like 2010, and I was like, "Dang, I can't believe I was playing when they when they were showing them hits." What, man? I'm dude. That, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and that was a it was a it was yo. I were, and I grew up watching NFL Crunch Course getting ready for my yeah, Pop Warner yeah, games. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Dog, they compare football to like a car wreck every single time. That right there, that was a, a NASCAR yeah. car wreck or something, dog. Like that was, yeah, I can't believe like we were really into and that. Was the, that was the that was the mentality. Yeah. So that's why I say I start off like it's all respect when Without I question. say that. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. But he's just so dominant. Um, and it, it's pretty ironic that you know the London game is where yeah. you know uh -huh. uh, last time we went it was I remember me and Eddie was sitting like up in the box and it was a third and two and they were playing the Chargers and uh, Derek was maybe in his second or third one mm -hmm. early in his yep. career yep. and he got the they gave him the ball what they're supposed to get and then he turned down some action in the hole maybe yeah. from a safety or whatever it was yeah. and you know kind of me and Eddie just kind of looked at each other like and and Eddie good. like Eddie got Eddie got tight. Yeah. Eddie was like, oh, nah, hell nah. No, nah, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, like, sat up in his seat, <laughs> shook it. He's like, nah. I remember the not, play that yeah. you're talking about, yeah. and that that's what encouraged Eddie to Yeah, Eddie's like, out. nah, hell nah. Like, that, nah, you can't be doing that. We had our discussion mm -hmm. about it, you know, what it means to me as a linebacker yep. when I see that. Yep. And then he had, wow, you know, we had yeah. our old conversation about it. And then obviously, you know, the infamous, oh, Eddie had a yeah, talk. But yeah. what I love that yeah. Derek did is like, okay, that was years and years ago. Right. Like, he's been the king since then. Sent, way yep. since then, you know yep. what I'm saying? So it's been great to follow his career and just see where he is and just to see, you know, how dominant he is and how much action uh, defenders really turn down. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, uh, like I told y'all before in another segment, like, I was looking for all the smoke. Right. And I'm not going to sit here and say when we played the Giants and they had to go against Ron Dane or, yeah. or Tiki Barber. Yeah. I mean, not Tiki, but Ron Dane yeah. or um, your man um, Brandon Jacobs or yeah, Corey right. Dillon yeah, yeah, or yeah. Jerome yeah. Bettis. Those guys that ran behind their pads. Yeah. Um, I was looking for those matchups too, but there's always a strategy in it. Yeah, I ain't just, I gotta, I'm just not running angles, up. Yeah, <laughs> angle I'm, I'm just not running up. Yeah. So let's be real about yeah, the situation. Yeah, 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 you know no what I mean? Jamal Lewis, who, <laughs> Jay Lou, what? Yeah. 
Yeah. Jay Lou, look, Jay Lou, man. Jay Lou didn't wear no gloves. Joe didn't. He used to tape, he used just to tape, tape his fingers. He used to tape Joe did. Jay Lou, like, yep. yo, that's crazy. <laughs> yeah, he was, yeah, he was Jay Lou didn't he was wear no gloves. He'll tape his wrist. Yep. Jay Lou was raw. Yes, he was. The <laughs> his shoulder pads dog. were huge, too. Huge. Corey Dillon's shoulder pads were huge. Yeah, Corey Dillon. You know, the, the guy that a lot of players tell me about that doesn't get the attention that he deserves is Fred Taylor. Oh, Down man. At Jacksonville. Freddie T, man. Freddie T, I call I him the goods. I that, too. Yeah, I call <laughs> yeah. him the goods because – um, at the end of the day, Fred T, he's going to pass block. He's going to take it, you know, 80 without being caught. Ran a 4-3. He's going to take it 80. Could catch out of the backfield. Smart understands the game. He's a dog. Plays with an attitude. He's going to talk mm-hmm. junk, too. You're going to mm-hmm. talk to him. He's going to talk right back to mm-hmm. you. And he was tough. Like, he was tough. Like, unfort- like I look, he ran for 10,000 yards, and I remember that run, and it was against us, uh, against the Titans. Yeah. Um, so I remember it was a dive. I came, I shot, I dove at his legs. He hurtled me, shook somebody, and then lowered the boom on C Hope. Yeah. And that's C Hope, my guy. I ain't yeah, trying no, to, you know what I'm just, saying? Oh, it happens like, to everybody. He C-Hope. showed his full package, his full repertoire of moves um, on, that run. on that run. And that just happened to be for 10K. And, mm-hmm. it, you know, he's one of those guys. He should go in the Hall of Fame. He Eddie should. George should go in the Hall of he Fame. Should. You know, um, I don't know how they do it, but they're just certain That used players. to be the number. Right. They're just certain players that have impacted this game right. or their franchises that, there you, go. you know, uh, they definitely should. should. You know, you know yeah. it is what it is. Even if Deion said maybe they're in another area of the hall, but, uh-huh. like, I don't care. I'll yeah, be, I'm in there. I'll be down. I don't got to be on the same. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I'm Put up in here. First flow. Yeah. Hey, I'm, I'm up in here. Yeah. I don't need a table. I'm yeah. in the club. You yeah. find me at the cool. bar. I'm yeah. good. Yeah, make my own happen. Right. <laughs> Man, you, you think about uh, the level of running back this franchise has had, too, with, with Talk Eddie. Talk about now, it. Now, Derrick Henry, 1390 yeah. away from becoming the all-time leading rusher. But Eddie George there, obviously leading leading rusher right now. Passes Earl Campbell, who is yeah. in the Hall of Fame. Chris Johnson. I mean, yeah. that, I mean, just at those four. Yeah, that, I mean. That's, that's as good as anybody in the league. Look. Uh, historically. You got CJ, 2K. You got Earl Campbell, obviously set the tone in Eddie George. And I think that, um, you know, those running backs that come here, especially those first rounders, man, um, you know, they, you can't not know. Right. Yeah. You can't not know because you grew up watching these mm-hmm. people, and that's who you want to be. That's mm-hmm. who you aspire to be. Like, I don't care. I wanted to be the next Ronnie Lott. Right. You know what I'm saying? So there's always somebody that you watch and you you aspire to be. And to come in and then, like, Eddie George is around. He comes yep. around. You see Eddie. CJ comes around. You see. Yep. And then Derek will have that opportunity to come around. You see Derek. Like, um, you know, it's just uh, it just magnifies what it means to play running back for the Tennessee Titans. Mm-hmm. Aziz Alshire at linebacker, you guys were talking about him earlier, and, uh, you know, we, we've enjoyed watching him uh, fly around the field. Um, we had him on the show a couple weeks ago, and and he, like, <laughs> go ahead, bro. What? Go ahead. No. He's no, twitching they keep, over they keep, there. keep bringing everything. Oh, I've got good Meanwhile, Eggy Bob's over here. Like, finished, everybody having a great time. Finished this and like, like, yeah, it's like, oh, it's man, all I wish, good. I like, wish people could see this. <laughs> Too, like. Okay, Aziz Al Shire. I thought I said something weird about Aziz Al Shire. No, no. Nah, he I was keep on... getting fooled when people coming down the steps. <laughs> like I think it's was. He, he, he was on a show a couple <laughs> weeks ago, and like while he was talking, I was thinking about you, like because right. he grew up playing safety. Right. So Slay asked him like, "Who'd you grow up like watching?" And he was like, "Ronnie Lott, mm-hmm. Sean Taylor, yep. Ed Reed, safeties." And he played safety. I'm curious, do you see some of your game in him? Um, man, that man's little. You know, uh, yeah. I, you know, I got a – yeah, in the sense that he flies around, he's sideline to sideline, he's where he needs to be. He understands the game beyond just line up at this position and do, you know, all those different things. Can he but, get more comfortable in the system yeah, of and course. actually get better? Of course. He can anticipate. He yeah. can know, you know, he can learn his players better. Yeah. Like, I kind of was able to, you know um, – like, for example, my D-line, we didn't play holding up blocks. So I would be like, yo, Albert and I tell you, Albert, whoever my defensive tackles are, on the snap of the ball, do what y'all want. Yeah. I don't care. You go left, go right, mm-hmm. go straight. But that's the only move you got. You didn't need to know? Yeah, I don't because yeah. I'm three yards, four yards off the ball, and I could play off them. So now if we call on, on over defense, they're just supposed to penetrate the A-gap. And right. if he sees he could beat them, Outside, go outside yeah. because I still got time to react. Right. So um, those are the type of things that, as your game starts to evolve, um, you can you can 
start to, to, to implement and anticipate and kind of control um, your pieces of the puzzle, mm-hmm. so to speak, which are um, your, your linemen and your safeties. So you, 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 were you, you okay with shedding? A lot of times, are you? you yeah, them? yeah. I, look, man, like, like Syracuse, man. Like, I, I, I just say to, that because Aziz, Aziz is smaller. Like, you yeah, don't like, caught yo, up so in that the was one of my things. biggest yeah. attributes. You yeah. know, I'm six three. Yeah. You know, uh, six three. I was two thirty eight, two forty. But yeah. yeah, hat in hands. I'm getting these people off yeah. me. Like, yeah. don't touch me. Yeah. I, that's how I was. <laughs> yeah. Like, don't touch my body. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> so I had a, um, you know, my limbs were so mm-hmm. so so my shock is quick yeah. and um. Yeah, you had to. Like, right. I had to because we didn't play in a system where Albert and those guys will hold up. Big right. Robert, they're, they're going not, to get it. They're going no, to they're get going it. Up the field right, exactly. Yeah. So you have to be able to be able to shed your blocks yeah. as well as get to the ball and make the play. So, right. uh, you know, smaller linebackers get in trouble with that, but I don't think Aziz will have that problem just because the game is played more in space yeah. right yep. now yep. and you don't got to bang as much. Yep. Uh I know a guy you love, Slay, like Danico Autry. I saw yes. this uh, today. Former Colts uh, d- defensive lineman, Danico Autry. This one is special to him. When he came to the Titans, his introductory press conference, he talked about how they could have signed me. They chose not to. It's personal. Yeah. And he's had big games against them. Uh, he's been great since coming mm-hmm. over to the Titans. And I don't think he gets the, def- uh, the attention he deserves, like, nationally throughout the league. He probably does with players. I'm just saying, like, these talking head shows and things right. like that. But this is his third season with the Titans. He has 20 and a half sacks. Wow, that's good. He had a team high eight last season. He has a team high three and a half through four games this season. That's another guy that can impact this game coming up on Sunday. Yeah, you know what? The way you broke um, Autry down, it's almost like when David Thornton came here. Yeah. Um, You know, they could have signed him. um, But, you know, the Titans decided to give him more money. And DT would always have his Best games against the Colts. Yeah. Like he played some good football, yeah. but against the <laughs> Colts, he against was gonna the be Colts, yeah. against the Colts, like dang DT, yeah. that was my tackle. Yeah. Yeah. Dang DT, <laughs> how you got here so fast? Yeah. Lindell White got the yo. It's so funny. You know how it is with teams. Yeah. Like Colts week, yeah. DT. You know, but that's that's just what it is because mm-hmm. as a player. Um, you remember those things. So and do. Like with, with the organizations and the franchise, it's just business. Yeah. But, look, sometimes that's personal. I'm a human too yeah, now. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, like, yeah. they, it, it's, a, it's a business. It's a but nah, this is personal. Right. And, like, you about to get all this work. So, <laughs> I love it. No doubt about it. Come to Scoreboard, Bar and Grill. That's where we are, Cedar Creek Marina. And you can uh, fill out one of these. I can't uh, give nothing to the conversation. Because you waiting on me to give me oh, oh, for, the, like, for the food? Yeah, you, like you, I'm, I'm, we got energy. you. Yeah, I'm trying. I'm trying my it's best. Like, it's like, like a, a car that needs gas. Like I, I, like I, I hope I'm praying to God that I can pass out so they can see what it's like <laughs> for a six eight guy to just pass out because he's he ain't eight. Hey man, can't nobody, can't nobody in here though. carry you. Can't nobody in here carry you. No, it fall that way. That's, yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's like when you're cutting down a tree. <laughs> just roll me into the wall. <laughs> Fall that way. Uh, you can beat Brent and Slay with uh, with your picks. Uh, Oklahoma, Texas. These are straight up. Y'all just pick them, and you could win a two hundred fifty dollar uh, prize pack from Scoreboard. Uh, LSU at Missouri, Notre Dame at, at Louisville, Alabama, Texas A and M, Titans, Colts, Cowboys, 49ers, Chiefs, Vikings, and then you get a total point scored in the Titans Colts game, and that'll do it. <laughs> uh, we did find out that Aaron Reese won last week. Yeah, he tied me. Hey. Why didn't I win? He was six out of seven. He was right there, y'all. Yeah, but why does he get to win with six, and I don't <laughs> get to win with six? That's true. The tie goes to <laughs> the tie goes to the what? To the runner. Can <laughs> yeah, we not? Uh, can we not win? Like, why are we even filling this out? <laughs> it's just it's just using us as a mockery. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly beat what we them, are. beat them. We come, exactly come to the carnival and beat them. Uh, Dallas and uh, 49ers, the big game coming up this weekend, Sunday Night Football. And it's funny, like, I mean, immediately this week, Dak was asked about yeah. about the Cowboys and 49ers. And, and they've been put out the last two years in the playoffs by the 49ers. Dak That's did not big. like that. He's like, I'm glad y'all are making me upset now. Yo, yeah, man, I, look. It, I think the jury, the jury. Shout out to the Cowboy fan, uh, but she might not like this. I don't. I, I look. I took the Cowboys is, on the front end. of What he's about to say. Dak is, Dak is suspect to me. Like I don't know. Like what do they have? One of these shows have you're not that guy. Uh huh. I'm not gonna put okay, him I out will, there yeah. yet for you're not that guy. But like, um, you know, I feel like 
Micah Parsons right now is the leader of this team. Yep. You know, and he backs it up for someone to be able You're to go. You're talking about dog, man. Right. He's going yeah. on a podcast every week talking about everything that's that going on in the NFL, everything he's doing, other people are doing, yeah. what teams are doing wrong. Yep. Then he's going out there and balling. Still delivering. And balling. Yeah. So it's like, look, man, miss me with all the, the pressure. And, mm-hmm. like, you are what you are. Yep. Like, you got weapons out there, Dak. Just be that guy. And right now, you know, um, I think, you know, I used to tell something to um, Brad Hopkins used to play, you know, when I first um, became a starter and mm-hmm. all that stuff. You know, it's getting a little longer in the tooth, and sometimes you got to get the, you know, yeah, the, the, the older guys going. They yep. might need something. Yep. You know what yep. I mean? They still no got question. it. They just might need a little yep. something. Look, so I would, start. Yeah, I tell mm-hmm. them, look, match my intensity. Yeah. I'll tell them for the game, Matt, just match my intensity. Yeah. The be hop will be out there <laughs> pancaking yeah, doing all yeah, that. But yeah. like sometimes, you know what I'm saying? You gotta get the energy from the other guys. And yeah. like uh you know how it is. You can't always have your your motor running and yep. you just need somebody to come like jump start it for I, you. I'm, you know, I'm what right I mean? you know what's funny about you saying that? Like actually Slay and I talk about that, like match each other's mm-hmm. energy. Right. And so that this whole food problem is tough. <laughs> no, 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 that's what I'm trying to tell you. Because it's like, rubbing off on me. Yeah, like, I'm, I gotta I'm trying keep my, my energy. I'm trying my best to push. I mean, you know what I mean? But <laughs> I but it, relating it to the game, like that's what I, I I was the same way. Like when we used to break the hood, I used to tell coach. Hey man, you ain't gotta get no pep talk. I got it. Yeah. You know what I mean? We get it out there in the in the in the, in the tunnel, and yeah. I used to tell them every time, hey man, I got us. Follow me. Just yeah. do exactly what I do, and we're gonna be straight. For I sure. promise you. You know what I mean? So and, and, and yeah. that's how that's how I was. Like when yeah. um we got called out, like when they called the defense out mm-hmm. for home games, that's what I was I was kicking yeah. in the door. <laughs> yeah. I'm like kicking go, the baby. door yeah. and the front, hitting the first thing moving. Yeah. And you know, that's that's <laughs> the <laughs> mentality. Absolutely. Definitely mentality. Big game coming up this weekend in uh, the world Ooh. of college football. Texas A&M and Alabama at Kyle Field. Texas A&M, uh, obviously the game sold out. They came up with more tickets, so I don't know. They're trying That's to amazing. set some attendance record or something like that. But that Texas A&M defensive line is ridiculous. And it is. They, they've obviously got their backup quarterback in. He has beaten Alabama a couple of years ago, Max Johnson, a big six foot six lefty. Um, I don't know what to think. Like – People keep saying that Alabama's gotten better, and I'm like, what has told you that? Like, right. they played Mississippi State. Okay, if you if you actually watch the game, they had some splash plays yep. that contributed to score separation, and the box score looks one way. But when you watch it, they're so disjointed mm-hmm. in their offensive line and and at quarterback. And and I I know they're they're trying to get more called run plays for the quarterback, Jalen Milrow. Right. And I think that that's worked, and and it's like one read and out. Um, and so, like, that's work. But, but they don't have that better. explosive run game. The offensive yeah. line hasn't been very good. So, I think this game is going to be decided with that Texas A&M front seven and that Alabama offensive line. I'm skeptical anybody coming off um, playing against Mississippi State because we saw the same thing in LSU. And we False like, confidence. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? We're like, LSU back. Like, look at mm-hmm. neighbors and, and Daniels. Yeah, and, yes, they do still have that connection in the road over to the next game. But at the same time. But the like, defense played yeah, well. It didn't against it, Ole Miss. Exactly. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, what does Mississippi State allow you to do that you think you can roll over into another game and it end up being a big game and you can't answer the bell because you – Whatever you had going on against Mississippi State, who's trying to figure it out, it ain't working against these big boys. So. I feel like Alabama is uh, playing up to their opponent right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like to everything yeah. that so both of y'all said, great opportunity. they playing up to their opponent, and because they're Alabama, they get over the hump. I yep. don't think Jimbo going to get the win. Yeah, Jimbo, Jimbo's selling wolf tickets. Guess That's what? That's what he's doing. I, 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 went, I went with them. I went, That's cool. I went with A&M. I went with A&M, too. Now, I'm put a little drink on that one. Alabama's defense has gotten better. That's for sure. And they showed that against Ole Miss. Yeah. They had Ole Miss completely confused. Yeah. Um, so, that part of it, you know, from an A&M standpoint, I think the home crowd helps you there that, that, with some that, energy. Man, um, dude, I ain't It is a 2.30 ooh. game. It's not your night I, game. I don't, I don't care. I don't care. I don't care down there. They, listen, they be they out there. Early. Yeah, they be out there the they night before now. doing their little chants in the crowd and all that with the little fake gun in their hands. I, like, did, I just spoke to somebody at the Red River Rivalry, and they already – They're ready. They're, yeah. They're but, ready now. But they, they're getting – they're ready now. <laughs> yeah, On the way you, over, like, I was is, talking to somebody in real. Dallas. They getting yeah, ready now. It's Texas, real, man. Texas State Fair, man. Like, yeah, it's, it, it, Texas, but the, man, they're going to roll right over from one of them high school football games. Get ready for that game. It's different down there, man. Listen, Texas. Texas. I don't feel serious. 
I, I think Washington's the best team in the country. I think Texas is right there. This yeah. this will be a good litmus test for them. I think Oklahoma uh, is stepping up in class by playing Texas. I know they're undefeated, but they're definitely going to get tested. Those Texas, test. those Texas wide receivers are ridiculous. Yeah. They're big, they're tall, they're fast, they catch. I mean, Yours and that quarterback, that quarterback yeah, got swag. Saying. Yeah, he's, he's dealing down there. And yeah. he's consistently playing well. Did turn it over last week a little bit, but um, – That'll be a fun game, too. Kentucky at Georgia, we can talk about when we come back. 3HL broadcasting live from Scoreboard Bar and Grill. French fries. Cedar Creek Marina. Slay still looking for his food. Eddie Bob. He got me looking now, too. E- <laughs> Eggy Bob has had two meals Eggy Bob's now. having a great time. He's having a great time. He's, He's already ate. people eating his chicken tenders. He's full. We'll be right back. 3HL 104.5 The Zone. Listen to me, man. Dr. Kellum always going to come through for you. You know, like, I mean, when you go to somewhere and you, 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 you like to order and you're like, man, this food is hidden and it's, it's right there for you. That's the same thing when you go to KellumStemCellInstitute.com, man. You go in there and ask Dr. Kellum questions. The person that's going through the therapy with you, he's going to talk you through it. Any questions you got to ask, he's going to have an answer for you. Your body, your cells, your solution. And not only about athletes and people trying to bounce back, but this, this is stretching all the way out, man, from sports Injuries all the way to autism. Yeah, that's right. If you want your, your son's on the spectrum, daughter's on the spectrum, whatever it may be, friend, get them involved in this. Car accidents, victims, yes, dramatically can get help immediately with facial and body scarring by using using your um, your stem cells, and they will also store them. So for future use as well, anything come up, you can go right in there. They already got it lined up. You can get a free consultation, 615-850-4415, Kellum Stem Cell Institute. Com. You know, you can save yourself a lot of time and energy by being prepared for the unexpected. That's why you keep an extra key under your doormat. And great, now you got to find another hiding spot. All I'm saying is that there is a reason why cars come with a spare tire. Unfortunately, there is no spare to turn to when your Internet goes out. Unless you have storm-ready Wi-Fi from Xfinity. Storm-ready Wi-Fi is a battery-powered backup that automatically switches your Wi-Fi to a cellular connection in the event of an outage. So you can stream or search even when the power's out. Give your home Wi-Fi some backup and stay connected for up to four hours with storm-ready Wi-Fi only from Xfinity. Learn more at Xfinity.com slash storm-ready. Restrictions apply. Storm-ready Wi-Fi limited to customers within range of 4G LTE cellular signal. Speeds reduced to 30 by 7 megabits per second. Actual speeds vary. For more information, visit Xfinity.com slash storm-ready. So this is a small bird, too, for that's someone right. that's never mm-hmm. seen a Bob yeah. White before. It's this little round softball. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, I wouldn't. They're not much bigger than my fist, you know. Um, they've got little legs, but they're a ground-nesting, ground-dwelling bird. If they never have to fly in their life, they wouldn't, right? They just do that to get away from hawks and owls, for the most part, or hunters. What they need is um, largely herbaceous plant communities, right? So they need wildflowers. They need a small proportion of you know grasses I don't need to you know vast grasslands right I need stuff that most people would call weeds those are providing good brood cover good nesting cover um, a lot of insects right that's that's what chicks need to develop early Bridgestone Firestone is a quail focus it is focal area so tell us a little bit why yeah you know it's largely because there are very few places that have wild quail in the state of Tennessee anymore and there's dozens of different factors that lead into that right everybody wants to jump right to predators but it's a it's a habitat issue right mm-hmm. it's a it's a landscape change whether that's we're talking about development or whether we're talking about fire not being on the landscape anymore or fields and young forests progressing into closed canopy forest right so the farm just by nature of it being an open landscape that's been maintained that way has held on to some birds and compared to most other places in the state Um, We're one of the very few. On top of that, you know, the potential for growing that population, it's higher here than just about anywhere else.
Paranoid from the weed. Friday. Oh, yeah. Friday. On the water. Feels like I just enjoyed 420. <laughs> like two hours after 420. Mm. 447. Uh, Slay's got his food. That's a problem. Lord have mercy. That's what I mean. You know, when you get after 420, right, you get the munchies. Oh, my gosh. You got the BLT pizza, which looks amazing. Yeah, Slay got good. something over here. I, I, look how much stuff is on that pizza. Yeah, look good. Gluten-free. Oh, I saw him with, with the ketchup like he was 11 years old. Hey, dog. I'm telling you, like. I mean, the whole bottle. <laughs> I know you ain't supposed to eat on the air, but I got to try it. <laughs> you did a whole spot yesterday with because of me. Slay, what was, um, you know, we came in with the uh, Tupac intro. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I always think about playlists mm-hmm. before a game. Are mm-hmm. uh, you have any Tupac on your playlist? And if so, what was uh, your two two Tupac songs on your playlist? My two that I went with, um, I he, had that hit, hit the world. Hit them up. I'll hit them mm-hmm. up. And Hail Mary. Mm-hmm. Okay. Hail Mary. Like those 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 were my. Hey Amen. What else did you have? Was Look, there anything I, specific that yeah, you had to have? Heavy little boosting. Looking, doing that, doing that gap right there, it was tough. In college, it was more cash money. Hove came towards the end of my um my run, but I couldn't oh, really yeah. get hyped to Hove. I more right. grooved to Hove, you know what I mean? But cash money, um, records, Lil Wayne, Juvenile, BG, but Lil Boost and Webby came in. They t- they took over. It was I, yeah. I rode I rode that I rode that through probably about eight years of my playing career. What about you, boy? Um. Well, my Tupacs were, um, you know, when I roll into the stadium, we stay at the Lowe's. So mm-hmm. when I'm like, when I'm driving down Broadway, going to the stadium, you didn't stay at the Millennium Maxwell House. Nah, that yeah. was when we was at uh, camp as a rookie. <laughs> um, it would be uh, picture me rolling. Yeah, man, yeah. in the car. Yeah, oh my, <laughs> because oh my it's like, God. that was my song. Like, yeah, I'm, 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 yeah. you know, I kind of like made it, yeah. but you know, it ain't over. But yeah. then um, I would always have to listen. To um, all eyes on me before I went out, Lord like mercy. in the game. Like I would always have to listen to that because that's the truth. All See, eyes, wrong. all eyes was on me. You, oh, want you know smoke? what I mean? Yeah, for sure. I wanted all the smoke. So uh, yeah, that, that was cool. You know what was crazy? At so I would have my playlist and get hype going out before the game and, and warm ups. I sweat. I'm drenched. Like I used to never wear my jersey and everything out to warm up because it'd be drenched. I come back in towards the latter part of my career. I used to have to, um, probably like the last five or six years, I used to have to come back into the locker room and I would have to put on gospel music, like to oh, calm me man. down, dog. <laughs> you were that wound up? Dude. You, like, needed, you needed the Lord? Heck, yeah. Like, it wasn't no, I'm telling you, dog. Like, I'm, I, man, I would go out there. I'll be, like, I'll file out. Like, I would pick up two quick files. And I'm like, why do I keep filing every time I get out? It's because I'm too amped up, you know what I'm saying? And then I'm overseas, so I can't right. play off. I can't talk to somebody to play off on and be like, hey, Slate. Oh, the Settle language. Down. Yeah. yeah, so they getting hyped. They see me hype. I'm like, oh, what they saying in the tag? Then they start your own little cheer. I'm like, oh, man, I'm going crazy. Five, yeah, five, that, five. That's yeah. the calm before the storm. That's <laughs> yeah. like what you're saying. That's what you have to learn. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You mm-hmm. definitely have that to learn. That takes time, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, I mean, look, it, by the time I got to the NFL, by the time I was starting, I kind of, I definitely had it down. Um, you kind of, you got to know yourself. Um, yeah. Like, yep. I'm the total opposite. In, in pregame, like, I always be like, man, you ever see a cheetah stretch? <laughs> you know? But, um, <laughs> I like, I'm going to take my lap. I'm going to take my lap around the field. I'm going to yeah. do my little stretch. I'm going to do uh, my little warm-ups, but mm-hmm. I'm not going to go too crazy. I'm going to just kind of really loosen up. Um, yeah. And then seeing if it, see if anybody talking crazy out there. D- please the be, please be. <laughs> so you're searching please. that out. Please. Yeah, man, I told you, I'm not playing. Like I want all <laughs> the smoke. Like I, like it was like. Um, so I always say this. I remember it's a true story. Being little, and you know some kids from the other neighborhood. Yeah, they were like, man, they're gonna come over here, and you know they about to. I just remember everybody, my little crew, being like worried. I'm like, man, forget that. Where they at? Let's go over there. Like you know what I'm saying? saying like forget all this waiting we're mm-hmm. gonna bring the fights to them and we ain't gonna end up fighting we end up playing five on yeah, five and yeah. like everybody was cool <laughs> but my point being is i gotta we attack him yeah. maybe i play defense yeah. you're not gonna bring the fight to me yeah. you know so uh yeah i was always uh looking for that i hear blaine say it <laughs> always hear blaine say it. i'm always looking for that little extra yeah you know i mean i'm always looking for somebody to talk crazy because like 
I'm going to another level. Yeah. Like I, that I'm sure you got to be one of those Adrian Peterson yeah. type type players to match where I'm what going got, with yeah. it. Like because I'm gonna do something to you. You probably ain't gonna like. Yeah. <laughs> that's <laughs> right. I told, I told I'm Babs gonna make you feel that's, uncomfortable. That's what it's supposed to be. I told Babs and Yoro. That's what I did. Like after after warm ups, you know how everybody be out there shooting and getting cool. I'm walking back and forth on the side, on the um, baseline, looking down on the other end, looking to make eye yeah. contact with anybody. Like. Oh, I got me one. He yeah. done said something about me, and I, I get out there. On the junk ball, I'm talking to him. Like, hey, man, I, so that's what, that's what you're going to do? You're going to talk about my mom's like yeah, that, dog? They, that's they, what we they on? They're going to smile. It's, and it's different. No. Like, the game now it's is own. different because these kids grow up own. playing, it's like, different. AAU, the seven yeah. on sevens. It's like, own. I'm not trying to swap jerseys with you. I'm <laughs> no, not trying to, especially after we lose. How am I swapping <laughs> yeah. a jersey no. with you after you just kick my you Catch know me at the end of the year. Yeah, man, catch up. Yo. I'm tight. I'm a sore loser. Yeah. I'm a sore yeah. loser. Yep. You hate losing well, more than you like winning. What? Oh, man, it's crazy. It. Kentucky mm-hmm. and Georgia. Georgia, 14-and-a-half point favorite uh, night game down at Sanford Stadium, 6 o'clock Central, 7 o'clock down there. Georgia has won 13 in a row against Kentucky. Kentucky looking for its third 6-0 and start in program history. Yeah. They've only done it twice ever, and they're trying to get to 6-0. and Georgia has won 22 games in a row. Brock Bowers. Georgia was having problems with Auburn. And Brock Bowers, uh, it, I, I keep saying it's almost like Kirby Smart called up to Mike Bobo and go, hey, man, what are you doing? Well, yeah. <laughs> Throw it to the one guy on the field that could be starting in the NFL right now. When all those fails go to the pro. <laughs> Before the last three drives where they scored 17 points, he had two receptions for nine yards. Yeah. After that, it was, what, eight for 148 mm-hmm. and a touchdown? And Yeah. That's have I, have you seen fourth. him play, Bully? Yeah, and that's what I don't understand about coaches, man. Um you got to go to your go-to guy. You know, oh, I have this game plan, and this is how the game plan works. <laughs> this is my first 12, my first 15. Yeah. Like, nah, nah, Jack. <laughs> yeah. Look, there's some plays you want to run. Right. But when you see a mismatch, Get go to, to that mismatch got right to. now. Got like, to. here we go. Keep feeding the yeah, post because he, exactly. he can't do nothing with Don't me. spare him. And Don't when they, spare him. When they double down, I'll kick it out to I, the shooters. I got you. But right now, just feed the post. Yep. yep. Absolutely. And that's what got him to win. So, it'll be mm-hmm. interesting to see if what he's more is. involved early yep. uh, against uh, Kentucky. My guess is Kentucky, who ran the ball for 329 yards yeah. against Florida, 280 from Ray Davis, that Georgia will be able to pinch that run game a little bit and make Devin Leary, Kentucky's quarterback, who I don't think is very good, try to beat them and, and get them in third and long. Are y'all believers situations. in Kentucky? Because I'm not like a big SEC guy, but I not can follow this, it by the default. Not in this week. Okay, yeah. I, I'm not a believer in Devin Leary. I right. believe in what Kentucky has. Yes. I don't believe in Leary. They're a, they're a physical, mm-hmm. road grading, run the ball, pound the rock team now. Yeah. And I, I like that. I appreciate that style. Yep. They play Kentucky style of football that they set the culture in. They wanted to get back to. So they like Leary. When it comes to opportunity for him to have to get him over the hump, mm-hmm. I don't trust. Him. Yeah, I got he's, you. He's gonna have to take a jump yeah, this week. Like yep. if they want to play in Atlanta, yeah, yeah kind of yeah, like like, like um, he's like the Titans quarterback. <laughs> well, he's got a little more experience. Y'all stupid, bro. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we are. <laughs> you have, what the, so to your point, yeah, you got to show me. Right, you the one got to beat me, Larry. You got to beat me. Right, yeah, he's capable, he, but and, you got to show. You got to show you day in and day out. He's fully capable. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, there's something wrong with you, man. <laughs> like, this isn't my day job. Listen, so. listen, <laughs> similar though, in that look, if Georgia stops that Kentucky run game, then what? Right, you know, you they, see what I'm then, saying. Then it's like, yep. Kentucky's not going to put when points you stop on the Derrick board. Henry, then what? Yeah, like George, yeah, it's on you. Georgia's going to win by more than two touchdowns, and it's going to be less than 48 points. That's what. Oh, I'm how crazy. Um, all right, five o'clock hour <laughs> coming <laughs> coming up. Uh, everybody has their food. That's good. Uh, broadcast is more jovial around here. Scoreboard <laughs> bar and grill, Cedar Creek Marina. We'll be here until six o'clock on 104.5 The Zone. What's happening, man? Genetic stress, hormones, aging, all natural and inevitable, inevitable factors that lead to hair loss. Fortunately, there is a proven way to reverse common and even rare patterns of balding. Using groundbreaking technology, advanced hair is simple. One day treatment regrows your own natural hair, even in those places where it's disappeared for years. 
and it's worked for men and women across all ages. Advanced Hair's breakthrough technology and top-rated physicians have improved tens of thousands of lives, but time is of the essence. Hair loss from natural factors can eventually reach a point of no return. So schedule your free consultation today and find out if you qualify for $500 off. Call 629-348-HAIR. We might not be able to prevent all causes of hair loss, but you can regrow your own natural hair with advanced hair. One-day treatment, life-changing results. Your new hair is guaranteed to grow at 629-348-HAIR or advancehair.com. Hit them up, 629-348-HAIR. Here's how you can never be winless. Uh, Call Artisan Custom Closets and let them help you say goodbye to clutter and get your free in-home consultation today and organize your closet or give you a show-stopping beautiful closet or maybe take back your office space. Find garage storage solutions for all those outdoor toys and bikes that are now needing somewhere to go now that some.
Good evening from Scoreboard Bar and Grill here at Cedar Creek Marina. I'm Joe Hunk. Is Jonathan Taylor going to play? Yeah, we still don't know. We don't. But what we do know is that Shaq Leonard, Quiddy Pay, as well as Bernard Raymond are all out. That is according to the final injury reports of the week for the Titans and the Colts. Jonathan Taylor is listed as questionable. So we'll find out on Sunday. Traylon Burks, Luke Gifford, Tier Tart, as well as M. And the PF are out as well for the Titans. Everybody else is good to go. That includes Peter Skaronsky. For all your foundation repair and waterproofing needs, you need to visit USSTN.com. Breaking news at once on your home for the Vols, the flagship station for your Tennessee Titans, as well as home 23HL. This is 1045 The Zone. Welcome in 3HL, 104.5 The Zone, Brent Doherty with you on a beautiful day in the Music City. We are out and about today, broadcasting live from Scoreboard Bar and Grill, location number two, which is now at Cedar Creek Marina, looking at the water right now, feeling that breeze come off, beautiful day to be out and about. Davis Nolan from News 2 is over here, fishing, as he tends to do. Uh, big Florida State fan, so he's happy about his Seminoles. We were just talking during the break about that. Uh, stop by for your chance to win. If you're here, make sure you go see uh, Eggy Bop over there, who had his food an hour and a half. Who's full? We did. He is full as a tick over yeah. there. <laughs> He's, He's looking for those about. churros. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oreo churros. Full uh, as a tick. Your chance to win uh, Kiss tickets, Nashville SC tickets. You can sign up for your chance to win Tennessee and Texas A&M tickets. Those tickets will be given away at one of the two scoreboard away, locations away, tomorrow. Away now. So that'll happen. You can beat me and Slate if you fill out your card and get get the most right. No point spreads involved. Just pick winners. Yep, I keep getting, I keep getting beat. Oklahoma at Texas, LSU at Missouri, Notre Dame at Louisville, Alabama at Texas A&M, Titans at Colts, Cowboys at 49ers, and Chiefs at Vikings. You can fill those out. Who did you guys take for win. that Cowboy 49ers? I took 49ers. Cowboys. Wow. Okay. It's time. <laughs> it's time. Nah. I it's took, time. Yeah, that's, I, see, that's now how I feel. offense is real. Man, hey, especially right now at this point in the yeah. season, man. You know they where rolling. they struggle, though, and they haven't been really tested? The offensive line. Okay. Hodgepodge of guys. They've obviously got one uh, Hall of Famer. Oh, he, he but you know why? <laughs> they get the ball off so fast. They do yep. get the ball off Rock fast. Rock Purdy is not holding the ball. Get it to his playmaker. He's either going to swing it right now to Quish, uh, excuse me, Christian McCaffrey, mm-hmm. yep. Brandon Ayuk. De- yep. Debo Sanders hasn't even gotten going yet. Right. He's, so, well, he's banged up a little bit, so he's trying to play through that. The Kittle. other thought is that Kittle will have to be utilized in pass pro this week. So your options down the field may be limited a little more than normal against this Dallas defense. Kittle, Kittle's good, but he's not great. Yeah, I had him on my fantasy team last year. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but like Watching it just numbers. kind of, it just kind of, um, kind of. You know, I know and the I game, like, so it gives me yeah. more insight into like where's your productivity yeah. coming? You know what yep. I mean? I'm, he's good. Excuse me for his team, of course. Mm-hmm. But obviously, with CMC Christian McCaffrey getting there. Yep. Debo Sanders uh, stepping up and Brandon Ayuk, he's kind of like a fourth option. Yep. So I'm not saying he's not good in fantasy. He has nothing to do with it. But I know he's not putting up the numbers that he was putting up three years ago at the rate that Trap, where right. he was kind of comparable to Kelsey. Yep, yes, sir. Yep. Mm-hmm. He's Keith Bullock, uh, former Titan <laughs> the bully, the legend, the bully. Uh, Ron Slay is here. I'm in the building and got some hey, I'm in the building. building. Best believe I'm in the building. Better be ready. It's good I'm yeah, in really the good. building. building. I ain't got no rules. Man, I'm for the show. Good, but I can't. So it's like cauliflower crust, man. Like I, I'm, a, I'm a fan of cauliflower anyway. But you know what it does for me? It well. makes me not eat pizza. Really? Yeah, I don't eat it. I'll mess this thing up. Well, I can't get it enough. I'm, can't do the I'm cool on the cauliflower. I don't even like cauliflower. <laughs> <laughs> you don't like cauliflower? You don't like broccoli I'm either not, then? No, I like broccoli. Oh, come on, Bullet. No, I like broccoli. You don't like it's cauliflower, It's all in too. the same family, y'all. No. You coming over to the, no, you coming over to the house First and you want to play with the big brother, don't want to play with the little brother. No, that's what you're doing. Cauliflower is dry. That's what you're doing. It's dry. Y'all need to Cauliflower stop. is good when it's pickled or has I butter, had, butter had, all over it. 
I've had it right. You know what I'm saying? Broccoli, <laughs> broccoli like, like, I get too, y'all. Movie theater uh, butter, uh, uh, cauliflower. <laughs> see, no, no. see, see, y'all disrespected cauliflower. Look, cauliflower, I got you, man. I know you out there listening. <laughs> no, no, I ain't going to let them do you like that, man. Cauliflower can just jump in. Hey, right dude, there. no, man. Uh-uh. One is it. Uh, no, that's man. all. Broccoli, broccoli. You is, is, no, you broccoli is the S class. Cauliflower to C class. It's cool. You and Pabs always get the cauliflower <laughs> wings, man. And, and, and they, be, wow. they, be, yeah. they be good. Punk, you had them. Dog. Punk likes everything. No, not, <laughs> see, now you about to put Hunk on the spot. No, no, Hunk doesn't like everything. No, he doesn't. You're right. He no, I'm telling you. Kid, so what, hap- what happened? What he happened? Used to think that, though, is man. somebody ordered extra cauliflower wings? So Don's like, "Oh, try them. They're good for you." I took a half they're a not bite. Good for you. They're just well, they're yeah, they're not as bad. bad. <laughs> so, they're like they're, they're good, Hunk. Try it. I took a half a bite. Done. Bab's so, got the wrong kind. So what they do, just dry out the cauliflower and no, dip they, it in the cauliflower to make the wing? No, they fry it. They take the the, the, the regular cauliflower, fry it just like a wing, and, and then put, put the, the sauce, sauce on it. And then put the sauce on it. Yeah, no, nah, bomb. Look, cold, listen, bullet, cold-blooded appetizer. So get you ready for the wings, you feel me? The wings yeah. come on the back end. That you sounds already got like, your little taste. That sounds a lot like. you get the bad yeah. food, and then you get to wanting the good food. Well, you might as well give me some tofu. <laughs> No, see, no, I, wouldn't, I, wouldn't, I ain't going that no, far. No, I've neither. never even tried it. I've never yeah. tried tofu. But I'm not missing nothing. Tofu is <laughs> supposed to take on the taste of the other things that it's on the plate. It doesn't taste like anything. <laughs> all, my, all my cauliflower people out there, I had I it in y'all. my miso soup. So, I maybe, uh, yeah, yeah. So, the closest I come to eating some tofu. Right. All right, uh, out for the Titans wide receiver, Traylon Burks. Anybody getting concerned here? Um, it's a couple weeks now. With them winning, no. <laughs> As soon as the loss pops up, <laughs> most definitely. I'm not getting concerned, man. I just want to see who he's supposed to be for mm-hmm. this team. Potentially, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, and you said potential. Like, I'm done with potential with because yeah. at the end of the day, like, he's been he's a starter. Right. You know? So, like, you know, like I remember when I was a rookie. Okay, I didn't start. Oh, we could see potential in him. Mm-hmm. I didn't start my second year, but you I played a lot. You up on special teams, Nick- Yeah, but, like, you could see potential. <laughs> right. And then when he gets in the starting lineup – Oh, okay, he was yeah, what we thought, we thought he was going to yeah. be. You know yeah. what I mean? But yeah. that's what I'm saying with Traylon Burks. We've just been seeing glimpses. And then, to be fair, look, we've seen him run go routes. We've seen him run crossers. And we've seen him run a dig. We've seen him run about three routes, yep. come back, four yep. routes. Yep. So, we don't even really know what What's type of player. Yep. Yeah, mm-hmm. that, you know. You know who, A.J. Brown that's yeah. slanting his money every who, time. Who yeah. are we looking for him to be in this offense? We know what. You know, D Hop is gonna mm-hmm. be right now. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, but you know, yep. and even right now with Chicka Con- Conquo, like yeah. they haven't really got I've been him. waiting to see him too. Yeah, and then yep. that to be fair to him, you gotta be fair to the player because you can't get off if they ain't calling the play for Very you. True. You know, um, and there's other things that can go into that. Maybe they're calling you to play, and you're yeah. not in the place where you're supposed to be, or you're not open when the quarterback's ready to throw. Right. All those different things go in, but um. Look, I, I know that Tim Kelly is going to give these guys the opportunity. Yes, indeed. So, gave it to him early. Um, Burks had a couple drops. Chiggs had a couple drops. You know what I'm saying? Hey, so, man, hey if you play wide receiver, your job is to catch, catch the, the damn ball. Yo, you know, it's, it's funny. Ball, like, I, I rattled <laughs> off his stats. It's just six for 99. Yeah. But he had the 170-yarder. That's true. Which was yeah, a huge play. Like, yeah. So do you see how that's like yeah. kind of like why I'm like. So five for 29. After, yeah, so people that. might be like, hey, bully, you won Burks. Nah, no. man, he's a first-round draft yeah. pick, and you got a team that's fighting. Like, okay, right after four games, the Titans look like a, a Mike Vrabel team. Mm-hmm. You know what yeah. I mean? The first game of the season in, uh, in New Orleans, they didn't win. That was players. If yep. Tannehill would have played a little better, yep. you know, maybe they called, you know, coaches yep. could have helped. However that worked. Right. You know, they came back, got it right. Second game of the season, I mean, the third game against Cleveland, Cleveland. Yep. it was players and coaches. Yeah. It was yeah. just a team. Absolutely. Sometimes you go out there, it's like, guys, what are we doing? Yeah. Coach, what are we doing? Yep. I don't they know. Got <laughs> they got a number. They got a number today. Yep. Do we kind of know? Mm-hmm. You actually you made a crack about Tannehill earlier, and we fed into it, of course, but. Do we kind of know what the Titans are offensively in that, like, if they can run the ball, that sets up the play action and they play well, and they've won two games doing that. If they can't run the ball, are they good enough at quarterback to overcome that? No. I'm just going to have to say it because it goes all the way back to the um, – you could take it back to the, the – any time in the playoffs when Derrick Henry was shut down, right? You go to, you go to Cincinnati, go to Kansas City, 
and uh, you guys can probably pick another one where it was a loss. You need your quarterback, yo. Cleveland. Cle- yep. like, yo, we need you to make a play. Yeah. We need you to make four plays. Yep. For $100 million, you should be able to make, make four play. plays. Yep. You, make you see play. what I'm saying? So yep. it's like, you know, it's not – look. I believe every player should get their money. That's not me saying why they give him. But, like, if you're getting that, that's the expectation. You know what I mean? And then when you don't show and prove, people are going to keep having that expectation. And then it's just going to be like, man, you can't get it done. You should be a good alternate. Did they set our first option down? You should be able to come up with a second option. That's your role. You know what it is. It's like, yo, Derek. It's almost like, I don't know if you saw the interview uh, with Beast, with Marshawn Lynch uh-huh. and um, Shannon Sharp. Yep, was on close Twitter. Say, yep. But what he was saying was, you know, it was a game where Russell Wilson in the game plan, Pete Carroll was saying, you should go for 500 yards this game. Yep. Russell Wilson had a subpar game. Mm-hmm. Marshawn Lynch was just like, look, bro, you don't always got to put it on you. I'm here for yep. you. I got you. Yep. Because we know you can step up. So yep. it's the same thing. Vice versa you, with Harry. Yeah, it's got to be the mm-hmm. same thing. And I need we you. have not seen that yet in those situations from Ryan, not to say that he – this is – look, man, it's the year to get it done. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's saying, the year. You ain't saying he can't do it, I'm but not saying you've it. not done it. Show me you can that's do it. it. That's, that's all. Yeah. all. Yeah. And that, that's what you keep saying, show mm-hmm. me. And so that's, that's where we are with this team. I think yeah. when we're analyzing, like, the game before it happens, like, this is a good matchup for yeah. the Titans yeah. because they'll be able to run the ball against the Colts, it and looks it, like, and mm-hmm. they'll be able to feed off that play action. So this is a good – Opportunity for them. And if you can't, and if they can't, I will say Tim Kelly, Tim Kelly has to dial some things up. Put him in a position. Then put him in a position, and the O-line has to hold up, yeah. you know, and the receivers have to make their plays. But yeah. quarterback got to deliver too. Because we, we, we heard it last year, getting ready to go into Cosell kept on alluding to it. When they get ready to go to the playoffs, <laughs> dog, they go – Derrick Henry's not going to – you said it. It's yeah. like they're not going to let Derrick Henry beat you. Ever. You got to beat us. And maybe if you get over that first hump and show in that playoff game that you can get it done, then everybody – oh, hold on, y'all. We got to think about this. You know J. What I'm Lou, J. Lou ran – Jamal Lewis ran for 2,000 yards. We played them in the first round of the playoffs. J. Jamal Lewis had less than 30 yards that <laughs> yeah. game. Yeah. You're not – like it's now a different It's be, a yeah. different beast. Once yeah. you, you know what I mean? Yeah. And hopefully that's where Spears can maybe right. that's turn true. Yes. Yep, that's 1,000%. Come, come play that, all yep. time. Um, good analysis there. Uh, Keith Bullock with us, Brent Doherty, Ron Slay. When we come back, we'll, we'll talk some Tennessee football with Joey Kent. Tennessee's an all-time leading receiver. And we'll talk more about the Titans and Colts. Coming up, scoreboard, bar and grill, Cedar Creek Marina, 3HL, 104.5 The Zone. Up to Dodge Chrysler, Jeep Ram. Maybe you've been thinking about that next new vehicle. These guys are your guys. They can help you out, and you can get it done this weekend. It's going to be a beautiful weekend uh, and a beautiful drive. 24 west toward Clarksville. Exit 35 is about nine miles outside the city, and then a beautiful drive into Springfield, Tennessee. Takes about 30 minutes from downtown Nashville. Best vehicle buying experience you will ever have. That's what's going to happen when you go see my friends at Gupton, Dodge Chrysler, Jeep, Ram. New or pre-owned car, truck, SUV, Jeep, whatever you're looking for, these guys are going to be able to help you out. Go inside. Uh, They will help make the numbers work after you take that test drive, and you will be exceptionally happy. Check them out online while you pretend to work if you're still there. GuptonMotors.com. All of the dealership information is there. All of the inventory is there as well. That's GuptonMotors.com. 3450 Tom Austin Highway. I don't know what your situation is. You do. Uh, whether you need more room, maybe repair bills are getting you, you need something more reliable, maybe you need something bigger. I don't know. Um, but uh, go tell them, and they will hook you up. No pressure at all. They want you in the vehicle that's right for you. That's it. 3450 Tom Austin Highway. That's up to Dodge Chrysler Jeep Ram. What's happening, good people? It is time to get to it. The fall has arrived, and you don't want to be the one, uh-uh, who has the issue with the HVAC with the first cold snap that you're going to see coming Matter of fact, tonight, it's going to drop a little bit on you. So if you ain't in order, you need to get the Spring Hill Heating and Cooling on the line right now. Dial up Kevin and the fam, man, and make sure everything is rocking and rolling. They are the heating and cooling company that can take care of all your HVAC needs. They've done it at my home, and that's for sure. Spring Hill Heating and Cooling offers free service calls with their repairs. You hear that? Free. Don't beat that. Plus up to 18 months of no interest on repairs. So get 
with it now. Make sure you get in there. You don't want to have that smell coming through your house. Like, what is that? You're looking around like, oh, it's weird, and now the cold, everybody freezing, got blankets. No, man, you want to be comfortable in your own home. Let Spring Hill Heating and Cooling make you that comfortable. It's always going to work because they are trustworthy. I put my name on it. SpringHillAC.com. Call them. All right, y'all, it's time for the parsley. We're going to do baseball and college football tonight. My parsley for Saturday's college football is a little too long for y'all. But I'll run through it at the end. Parsley for tonight. Kansas State at Oklahoma State. I took Oklahoma State plus 11 and a half. Nebraska at Illinois. I took Nebraska plus three and a half. Parsley for baseball tomorrow. Orioles money line. Braves money line. Dodgers money line. Plus 274 right there, people. And a little something for the, the Titans. Minus two and over 43 and a half in that game versus the Colts. Now, did you get that? Kansas State, Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State plus 11 and a half. Nebraska plus three and a half. Real simple. Baseball. Orioles money line. Braves money line. Dodgers money line. Now, I'm going to do this college football one time. So, hope you got your pen and pad ready. Yeah, they sure can't rewind. You're, you're right. and m and m I'm picking them to win. Money line. Let's pick them right now. Kentucky at Georgia, under 48. Colorado State at Utah State. Go to Bet the Boy Podcast. Washington State at UCLA. Washington State plus three. Oklahoma at Texas. Texas money line. Notre Dame at Louisville, Notre Dame money line. That is your parsley. Book it.
3HL 104.5 The Zone. Brent Doherty, Ron Slake, Heath Bullock broadcasting live from Scoreboard Bar and Grill at Cedar Creek Marina. That's where we are talking about the games coming up this weekend. One team doesn't play a game this weekend. That's the University of Tennessee enjoying that bye weekend. Joey Kent, Tennessee's all-time leading receiver, joins us now. J.K., what's up? How are you, man? Hey, what's going on, guys? I know hey. I know what this is, too, man. It's, it's, it's some good eating. And nice cold beverage or, or two with this crew. We can neither confirm nor deny. Let's say. <laughs> all, of the, all of the above. Right, there you it, go. Got, it got quiet. Why did it get so quiet, man? <laughs> Slam with his smacking. Hey, well, I'm getting to it over here, JK. <laughs> so, up, by, week, by week in college football, what did, what did you typically, what did you guys do back in the uh, 90s? Man, I didn't have any money, so I went back home. I mean, these guys, these guys now, they're, they're probably flying to, to, to Florida and all out of the country. Like, I went home, man. But, you know, when you're a freshman, you go home for that first time during the bye week, and, and hopefully, it's like, your high school is playing. Like, to go back for the first time and, and, and stand on the sideline of, of your high school team, and you feel like you feel like the man. Like, you feel, you feel like a 10-year vet in, in the league, man, because you're, you're one year removed from it, but you've learned so much, man, over that you know over that last six months playing in college, man. So um, the good part about Tennessee's bye week is perfect. Obviously, we can get a little bit more healthier, but the most important thing is Texas and Evan, Alabama are playing each other, and obviously those, yes. those are our next two opponents. And so hopefully they can beat up on each other. You know, we can get some tips and – and those guys can kind of sit back and relax and watch the game from a, you know, from a fan perspective, but also look at some some tips that maybe can help them in the game back in the next couple of weeks. Hey Joey, uh, as a former teammate, I was like, I didn't know that you was the all-time leading reception <laughs> at, at Tennessee, and I just remember being a rookie, you know, with you and whatnot. And um, obviously, it's Colts Week, and they were asking me questions about playing against Peyton Manning. Um, what was it like being his teammate? And um, you know, obviously, this is uh, Peyton before he became the sheriff and the Titan Killer, and. Uh, any other nickname that he has uh, <laughs> earned because everything he has gotten is definitely earned. But what was it Was it like um, being back there, them UT days, and, um, you know, young Peyton wheeling and dealing? Yeah, I mean, that's a good question, um, Bully. Man, you know, you start early. Um, I was two years ahead of him. You know, obviously I was red shirt, but I was two years ahead of him as far as class. But, you know, watching him come in, he came in with another guy. His name was Brandon Stewart. Um, Brandon Stewart was highly recruited as well. Um, he was a I – I don't know if he was more highly recruited than Peyton, but they were close together. And Brandon Stewart reminded me of Heath Shuler. Like, he had the same body, um, body. he had the same arm strength. And so, my, in my mind, you know, my young mind, I'm thinking, okay, Brandon Stewart has the, the, the leg up on, on Peyton because he's falling behind the mold of a really successful quarterback in Tennessee. But – you know, as as the months went on, you can see how hard Peyton worked, man. He outworked everybody on the team man, and how smart he was and how prepared he was. Man, you saw it early. Obviously, I, I had no idea he, he'll become one of the best quarterbacks of all time. Um, yeah. But you really saw it early just through his work ethic, man. And, and uh, I remember the first play. I was I, We were playing UCLA on the road at the Rose Bowl. Jared Cole got, got hurt. Um um, that was awful. Todd Helton came in, and then Peyton came in, and you know he was all excited. And you know I don't know if you guys remember the guy, um, a, a Tennessee lineman, played for the Titans too, Jason Lehman. He was like, man, just set up and just call the play. You know what I mean? Like he, cause he, was, he came in very, very excited about the opportunity. And um, yeah, I always know. heard that he came into the huddle and said. Uh, what was that movie line? Let's, let's put the women and children to bed and go look at for dinner. Hey, and man. Jason, Jason Lehman looked at him out of there. Shut the hell up and just call the play. Right. <laughs> yeah, he, he, he said a little bit more than, than hell up. But, <laughs> 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 but, but yeah, he was – It was. Um, I, I remember that, man. It was the first opportunity. You know, that's a big-time That's a big time game, man. You play UCLA. Yeah. And back then, UCLA was – that was J.J. Stokes' UCLA. That was, mm-hmm. you know – that was a good UCLA playing at the Rose Bowl, his first game, um, man. And he, he played he played relatively well. And then, um, you know, Todd Helton played a couple more games and at Georgia. He got hurt. And then Peyton 
um, took over from from there, man. He never looked back, man. But I just remember um, that off season after after that season, after his freshman year, him just kind of taking charge of the team, and um, it was amazing to see for, from a young from a young guy. He gained the seniors and the juniors respect um, pretty pretty um, early on because of how hard he worked. Joey Kent with us on 3HL. So is the story true? Did he used to go into the film room like late at night and then lock everybody out? It just that's a true it, story. It, yeah, that, that's a true story because I, I, I think Brandon didn't know that Peyton was going in um, later, you know, after the um, after practice. And so um, Brandon caught wind of it and decided, he okay, if, Pey- if this Peyton's doing it, I'm going to do it too. And, but Peyton will lock the door behind him. So. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that's mad funny. <laughs> yeah, it's, I mean, it was nasty to work back then. I guess you had to do what you had to do. But, yeah. um, you know, I'm the rest drop on you, man. Man. Yeah, the rest is history. I mean, does that surprise any of y'all? <laughs> nah, you got nah, to go get it. got to go get it. Joey, did, did – like, let's say you drop a ball and you go back to the huddle. What was Peyton's reaction? Did did he get into you verbally, or what was that about? I I don't recall really dropping that many, Brent. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, a, that's a perfect answer, JK. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, no, man. It, you know, Pey- Peyton. Um, you got to you got to understand. I was older than him, right? And so I, I you know, I had a, a few. I had a year or two over him, and and we had a we had a really good um, receiving core, man. So we didn't have a lot of mistakes, man, because we we practiced so hard during the off season, man. You just understand the amount of work that we put in, and a lot of it was because of him. Um, I was considered one of the leaders on the team too, so I got all the receivers together. We would. We would do like seven on seven, one on one, at least four times a week. Like you know, we would do this on our own, right? Outside of yeah. our lifting and our our running um, exercise and all that good stuff, um, we were so well prepared, man. That we were, that there weren't a lot of mistakes, and we had, and we held each other accountable um, as a receiving core. Like if you did something wrong in the game or in practice, you're gonna hear about it in the beach. You're gonna get laughed at. You're gonna. I mean, it's gonna be. It's going to be something if you were to mess up in the game or drop a ball or, or you get if you get thrown, you know, by DB. All that stuff played into how how we played and how we practiced. So, Joey, let's fast forward to to this to this UT team. Um, you know, yeah. last year we saw a quarterback in Hendon Hooker who was a Heisman hopeful, who was literally up for the Heisman, and this year yeah. we're seeing Joe Milton, who's out there. You know, he's doing his thing. Um, talk a little bit about, um, especially for the UT fans, uh, w- the difference you see in Hendon Hooker uh, when he was here and, and Joe Milton and why maybe there's, you're not seeing um, the same type of UT football was played that was played last year, this year. Yeah, I mean, Hendon was, you know, I, I think UT fans get spoiled sometimes when they see a player. Um, and I, and I, I guess I can say the same thing about about him and man, he didn't make a lot of mistakes, man. He threw maybe three or four interceptions all last year. Um, he knew when to, to tuck it. Um, he knew where the place, the ball placement was excellent. Very smart. Um, I, I think the difference is, man, that it's a trust factor. Um, I, I think Milton has all the tools, right? The physical part is there. Um, I don't know if he had he has the total trust of the coaching staff like Hendon did last year. Um, but also you're missing a guy like Tillman. You know, you're missing a guy like Hyatt. Um, I, I know we've, we've, we've had some replacements. Brew McCoy, I, I hate it that he got injured oh, um, last game because he was turning into not only, only a leader on offense, but he was, a, he was becoming a leader overall as far as the team. Uh, we have to have some guys step up, man. But I, I think that's the biggest difference is the trust factor. And that's why you see a lot of balls going sideways instead of down the down the field, I, I think. Um, I, I think that's the only way I can I can understand that. Um, and maybe they're trying to 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 do some things differently because of his skill set. Um, but I think to beat the Alabama, to beat the Texas a and to beat the Georgias, you're going to have to trust them and, and let them throw the ball down the field, over the middle, uh, run different route com- com- combinations to to get these guys open. Joey Kent with us, uh, former teammate of Bully over here. Slay. JK, um, what, so how much 
ownership do you put on the receivers or responsibility do you put on the receivers to help your quarterback out like Joe Milton? You know, I know as, as fans, after you see hand and Hooker, what he does and the ball placement and he's sticking it on the, on, yeah. on the receiver's hands, like what is it? What does it mean? Like, if Joe Milton is a little off, like, how much is that on the receivers? Because a lot of times it was a couple of drops here and there that I thought that could have helped him, you know, get that confidence. Or um, as a receiver, you you make that that hard, that difficult catch. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's a good question, Stay. Um, you know, it's not just a UT thing; it's a universal thing. If the ball, right. kind of, if the ball hits your hands, you, you, it's your responsibility to catch it, man. And, you know, you saw Thornton have a drop or two. You saw Nimrod mm-hmm. um, come in the last couple of games and, ha- and had a had a drop, man. Um, Squirrel White has been really consistent in catching the ball. You know, he's a young guy. I, to me, him and, and Keaton are considered the leaders now of the receiving yeah. core, right? So that's going to be the two guys that they're going to have to lean on going forward. Um, I'm hoping I'm hoping hoping Thornton come, comes alive. It, it, seems, it seems to me that his confidence is not there. Obviously, he was hurt last game. Didn't play last game because of the hamstring, but he made a hell of a catch against Florida. I mean, you just yeah. don't understand the difficulty of the catch that he, one of the catches he made in Florida. But then he comes back and drops a you know an easy easy ball. So um, I don't know if it's concentration. To me, it's more confidence than anything. Hopefully, he can get that back, get healthy um, this 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 bye week, and come back and. Um, and play well against Texas and and, and um, Alabama because you're going to need him, man. He's a big, big body, six five. He's a four three guy. Looks pretty, man. He's just a pretty receiver. Mm-hmm. Um, we're going to need him to step up as well, man, because yeah. um, that that production that that we lost with Brew, Brew, man. People don't understand how big of a loss that Brew is, man. Yeah. Again, I'm, from the leadership, the toughness. You know, he was one of the toughest guys on the team, offensively or defensively. And again, he was becoming a leader, you know, of, of the team. So that's a huge loss for not only the offense but the entire team. So other guys have to step up. I don't, I don't know who's going to be that tough guy of the receiving core. I, I don't know who that is. I don't, maybe we won't have that tough guy. Right. Um, but somebody has to step up. You you get the oppo- you you happen to lose Bru McCoy, who's an overall leader, but you gain one back in Cooper Mays. How much more mm. fluid was that offense, man, when being able to see it? Even, even with Cooper sucking wind, boy, like, <laughs> <laughs> like let's slow it down, but still able to push through it, man. That that, that got to give you confidence, man. Cause I, I looked at yeah. it and I was saying that, man, it, it looked like he gave Joe Milton more opportunity to pay attention to the skill position guys more so than having to check at the offensive line and things of that nature. What did what did Cooper Mays? What what kind of stability did he bring back to this offense? Man, that that was that's a good call out, man. I, I wish we had him doing Florida. I'm not saying yeah. that we would have beat, beaten Florida. I think that just the game would have slowed down for for Joe. I just seemed like Joe seemed unsettled, and mm-hmm. you know we had a I don't know what classification is the, the guy that replaced Cooper. Maybe he was a freshman sophomore, but he didn't um he didn't seem settled as well. So when you don't have that that you know that that calmness. From an offensive line standpoint, it, it kind of trickles back to the quarterback. Um, you can see the difference um, this last game against South Carolina that Cooper provided to not only Joe but the rest of the offensive line, man. I hope he stays healthy. Yeah, you're right. He was second win during the game, man. But he fought through. <laughs> you can tell, man. You can tell the difference in the offensive line, man. They, they played one of their better games. And, and when when he's in the lineup and Mincy is right, um, you know, when he's when he's totally dialed in, man, this offensive line can be can be pretty good. It won't be the best offensive line in the SEC, but it can be pretty good. And we need we just need to be pretty good going forward to the rest of the for the rest of the season. We can't have another game like Florida as far as offensive line play and, and quarterback play for us to be to to achieve our goals that you know to to achieve our goals to maybe compete for the East and and, and, and beat Georgia. Yeah. Joey Kent with us. Uh, Joey, uh, always good to hear from you, man. Uh, glad you're doing well. Thanks for hopping on the show, man. Appreciate you. Yeah, appreciate you guys having me on. Appreciate you, J.K. All right, Joey. Check right, out yeah, what right. uh, J.K.'s got going on, thatlegendaryplay.com. You need to check man, that out. Man, they got out. glasses and everything now. They're yeah. up to merch, baby. <laughs> oh, man. It's real. I stumbled onto one of their business meetings one night. I'm going to stumble into one of those glasses. They're creative. Yeah, they are. <laughs> like, they've, been, 
A very great. A it's very funny, great. like we're we're almost like working a baseball game with all our signals yeah. to each other right now. <laughs> we're trying to figure Come, it all coming out. down the line, baby. We're coming down the line. <laughs> I, I I wonder how how much J.K. and I, we didn't get a chance to ask him because there was so much to catch up on. How much he um, is impressed by this defense because we knew this defense would take a step. But I don't know if we were going to see a guy like no. James Pierce, no, six they need, five, coming off that edge. They still need depth. Yeah, I mean, you know what I mean. But they're getting after the quarterback. Lead the SEC in sacks. Who's number twenty seven? That's him. Yeah, that's what I thought you were talking about. Yeah. you know who flashes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was like, I who's do, number twenty seven? Hey, big boy, been making plays since Virginia. Yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. I, you know, um, that was one of the things I noticed about UT is the way their defense gets after him. Yeah, yeah so. he has six sacks in five games. Um, He's a dog. Good. Difference maker at hey, Ran. North Carolina. Carthon. <laughs> Six Sam. five. He's just a sophomore. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. All right. Yeah, one more. <laughs> hey, keep, yeah, one keep more. raising your stock, big fella. <laughs> yeah. Hey, mm -hmm. thanks for coming out, man. Hey, appreciate man, I appreciate y'all, man. Anytime I can get out here, I appreciate y'all. Let me get the reps. There he is. Thanks. He's a bully. 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 Uh, See you Sunday, bully. You know it. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to tell you where? Tell everybody where your spot is? Not yet. All right. Uh, coming soon. Coming soon. Yeah. Coming soon. Yeah, uh, we're going to talk about Anthony Richardson. How do you deal with a 6'4", 244-pound right. guy that could get outside the pocket and run down the field? Uh, that's coming up next as we continue our coverage of Titans Colts. This is 104.5 The Zone Broadcasting Live. Scoreboard Bar and Grill, Cedar Creek Marina. We'll be right back. What's happening, people? Keep the lights on. How are you going to keep the lights on? Cove Generators is your premier generator home standby generator dealer. Call them today for the free 10-year plan. Yes, it's going to get you the free 10-year warranty, I, I should say. But right now, if you order before this deal runs out, you get a generator home standby generator now, right now, through October 8th. That's over a $1,000 value, man. If you don't dive in on this, I'm telling you, you may regret it. It's coming around the corner. You know the storm season. Electricity goes out real easy around these parts, man, so you want to stay on top of it. Any kind of generator you got, they will perform maintenance on it, even if it's not one of the ones that they sold you. So hit them up, 931-559-3311. That's 931-559-3311. CoveGenerators.com. Terms and conditions may apply. You got to call for details. Hey man, I'm telling you, don't you don't want to you don't want to miss out on this. You done heard me and Babsy talking about this over and over. CoveGenerators.com, stay connected through it all. Maryland Farms Wine and Spirits, that's where you need to get stocked up for the weekend. We got tons of football coming up on Saturday and Sunday and tonight, as a matter of fact. And uh, Maryland Farms Wine and Spirits can get you stocked up if you know what you want and you just want to pop in and pop out. You certainly can do that. It's easy to get in. 101 Creekside Crossing in Brentwood by the Publix in Maryland Farms, just off Old Hickory Boulevard. They're open Monday through Saturday, 9 a.m. until 9 p.m., closed on Sundays. Delivery through the Maryland Farms Wine and Spirits app. They offer curbside pickup there, so download the app and make sure you are up to date. Maryland Farms Wine and Spirits locally owned, serving Brentwood and Middle Tennessee for more than 17 years. Football season is back, which means game day cocktails. From Maryland Farms Wine and Spirits, stock up with your favorite bourbon, tequila, or whatever you need, or have them help you craft something special. They'll do that for you for game day. Maryland Farms Wine and Spirits, 101 Creekside Crossing in Brentwood, and online, MarylandFarmsWS.com. Awaken 180. Yes, you got to dive into it, man. You want to keep the weight off? I'm telling you, just get it off. This is, the, this is the journey for you. After reaching your ideal weight, you receive free support for life. So drop the weight. Lose the weight, let go of the weight, however you want to put it. Whatever you feel comfortable with, just do it, man. Awaken 180, you arrive at the maintenance part of the program. That's where I am. After dropping 45 pounds, getting down for 300, which was crazy. Never been that big in my life. Now I can get back out there, shoot some hoops, you know what I mean? Get on a nice little bike, little walk, whatever it may be. No inflammation, just waking straight up, getting to it. I did this with Awaken 180. You can do the same thing. You want to lose the weight? Dial this number right now. Get you a consultation, 844-346-1800. That's a free consultation, 844-346-1800. Online at Awaken180WeightLoss.com. You got to keep going, so I'm going to keep going. This is what it is. I'm eating me a cauliflower pizza right now. I can eat what I want to, Awaken180WeightLoss.com.
three at Tell 1045, the zone wrapping up the week. Man, it's been a good one, and hope you've had a great week. It's going to be a good weekend. I know a lot of people have the fall break day That's right. happening next week. That's right. It's a good day. weekend. We, week off um, for the Tennessee Vols. We just focus on the Titans all week, and man, now it's time to recharge and watch all these games. Yeah, a lot of SEC games. LSU at Missouri. What is Missouri? Mm. They've got one score games against inferior opponents. What are they against LSU? LSU right. coming off that loss to Ole Miss, what are they? Do they bounce back or do they let that affect them? Right. One loss can turn into two sometimes. Yes, they could. Anxious to see that one. That is a uh, that is the early game, 11 o'clock in the morning. Kentucky and Georgia tomorrow night. Again, I like Georgia in this matchup. Mm-hmm. I love Kentucky. I just don't think they match up well yeah. uh, against uh, Georgia. When Kentucky can bully people, that, right. those are the games they're going to win. I don't think they're going to be able to do that against Georgia. Um, so, we'll, but we'll see. Yes, we will. We'll see. Um, again, I said this last week. Going into that Florida game, never question the mindset of a Kentucky team coach under Mike's, uh, Mark Stoops. He, he will have them ready to play. Yeah, and they're not Without going question. to bow down. No, that's not in this DNA. They might DNA. get beat because yeah. of X's and O's and, yeah. and Jimmy's and Joe's and all those things. Punking them? Yeah. No. Nah. Right, that's that's tough to believe. Bama at Texas A and M. A and M a two and a half point favorite at home. That is going to be a live environment. That is yeah. the game I'm looking to. Looking forward to most. 2.30 is the kick time there. Uh, does Alabama absorb their second loss of the season? Man, I wonder how long how long, how long, long ago would it be when he has an opportunity to lose three to four games in the season? You know, I Saving think he would have first to go year? back to his first year. Yeah. yeah. And you said Alabama – you said Arkansas Ole Miss at first, right? That was the first game you said? No, okay. I haven't gotten to it My yet. bad. Uh, but, um, no, the Alabama win total now is eight and a half. Or it was before it was before the Ole Miss game. It might wow. have changed, but it got down to eight and a half. Could you imagine? Man, like an eight and four Alabama team. I don't think we're there. I think nine and three certainly is in play. And and with Saban, do you feel like he's like at the beginning of the season, like man, maybe it's a chink in his arm. He looks like he's ready to walk out the door. I don't feel like he's like that right now. I feel like he's he's fighting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Vandy at Florida. Florida by eighteen and a half. Did I? I, I think I might have teased, you teased that. that one yep. up. Yeah. <laughs> Most definitely. I think it went up to about 24. Florida, Florida's going to win that. Yeah, game. I know. I would think it went up to 24 or Unfortunately uh, for our Vanderbilt Commodores. And fight, listen, Vandy. Vandy fan, if you think we hate y'all, we don't. No. We want you to fight. <laughs> we actually bet on Vandy before right. the season right. started. Right. Like, we want you to win. To win more than four games. Arkansas at Ole Miss. How does Ole Miss deal with that emotional win against LSU? <sighs> yes, KJ indeed. Jefferson coming back. Yep. Uh, coming into town, and they've got a weapon back. So, yep. we'll see. KJ didn't play well last week. No, he did not. Sanders was getting his footing back up under him, so it would be interesting to see another game with Sanders and, and um, KJ Jefferson, how they combat that down. Because one thing about them, they can't take over a game. Yep. But Ole Miss, boy, when they rocking, it's rocking in the grove. Oklahoma and Texas. Yeah. Red River rivalry Good at job, the uh, Cotton Bowl, the Texas State Fair, 11 a.m., you think anybody's fried down there right now? Man, fried day. Texas is going to win big. Yeah, I'm going with Texas. Yep. Going with Texas um, all right, and then uh, San Francisco and Dallas in the NFL Sunday night game. Looking forward to that one. Yep. I've got Dallas. You've got San Francisco. I do. What's your reason for having Dallas? I think that San Francisco's offensive line hasn't been tested, and they certainly haven't been tested mm-hmm. like they're going to be tested by that, that Dallas Cowboy front seven. So, I like that matchup. I think that George Kittle is going to – listen to the bet the board. Yeah. They, they talk about this. George yeah. Kittle going to have to be left in pass pro right. quite a bit. Debo Samuel still banked up a little bit, yeah. playing through it. Right. Uh, McCaffrey's incredible. Uh, Ayuk's incredible. Yep. Uh, San Francisco is an incredible football team. Just this weekend, this matchup, I think Dallas is pissed off mm-hmm. about the whole San Francisco-Dallas thing. Yep. And I think they're, you're going to get their best. Comes to a head, man. I think I, you got to see something from Dak if they want the opportunity to win. Definitely true. You know, I know Michael Parsons is going to go nuts. But I just think Mike Shanahan uh, – Mike Shanahan. Uh, <laughs> it is Mike Shanahan. Isn't it? No, what's his dad's name? Dad's name's Mike. That's what I thought. So, Shanahan, the son. <laughs> I, I just think right now at this point in the season he's in his bag. But having that time with Brock Purdy last year, letting that swing over to this year and being able to use a McCaffrey, have a whole implanted um, uh, 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 game plan with him, Dog, it's, it's different. I think this early in the season, this was late in the season, I, I, I could lean your way. But early, I think they got him. Titans at Colts, we've teased Anthony Kyle Richardson. Shanahan. Six you. foot four, 244-pound quarterback. Listen, Yeesh. not an accurate thrower, nope. still a rookie. Yep. 
Uh, Greg Cosell said he basically has nothing, no idea what he's looking at defensively. Mm-hmm. He's just Playing. making plays, yep. and he's an athlete. <laughs> uh, but how do you stop him when he runs? Keith Bullock said on the way out of here, chop his ass. Yeah, yeah. Might gotta hold. You might gotta hold him till everybody else can get there or whatever. But boy, let him have it. Touch him like you did Burrow. That's what Blaine used to tell Samari Roll: just make him move his feet. I'll be there. Uh, yeah, I'm on the way. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on the way, baby. I love it. So Titans now a two and a half point favorite after yeah. the Colts open one and a half point favorite. So yep. a lot of money swinging there. What do you think about Jonathan Taylor? Are they gonna get anything I think out it, of him? I think he sits, man. Um, I think it's pushing it to put him out there. Um, I think you're risking it. I just wouldn't do it with my franchise guy, but, hey, you got AR. That's the riches. Linebacker Shaq Leonard, defensive lineman Quiddy Pay, both out. That, that hurts. That's also, huge. their starting left tackle out. Opens up some opportunities for that Titans defense. I think the Titans are going to be able to run the ball. I think they're going to be able to – I think you saw the game plan against Cincinnati yeah. offensively. I think they're going to run the ball. A lot of Derrick Henry. Mick Spears in. Yep. Play action pass game. Score. Do yep. they get over 27? They haven't done that in a long, long time. Ah, not for me. I got them 24 21. Uh, three point victory. 24 13 for me. Hey, there you go. Spank them. Maybe 20. Let me go 20. 24 20. Okay, let's go to them. We're, we're, we're going right to land there. right there together. Right there. <laughs> Appreciate um, Ecky Bop out here. Kirby out yeah. here. Hunk. Great job, bro. Holding it Thank down. You, sir. Um, Zeph in the studio. Way to go, Zephyr. Zeph in the world, in the studio at the World Famous Music Row. Mm-hmm. Looking at the Bachelorettes out the window. Yeah. Get out that window, Zeph. The Woo Girls. Woo! You got, you got a big weekend coming up? Are we supposed to be out? Oh, we're about to be here in about 30 seconds. All right. Yeah. What, what yeah. we got coming up? Uh, we got the 3HL After Party brought to you by Awaken 180 and coming up one. next. And then what? High school football. You'll be doing something tonight. I'll y'all. be having Friday night finals at, right after that as well. So we, we're going to be all we're gonna be live all the way till 11 tonight. And Ickerbob was pointing at his head. By the way, props to Jim Nance, who came yeah. on our show, told everybody how much he loves Nashville. He was at a meeting with Percy Warner Golf Course, which is – of course, I played when I was a little kid. It was mm-hmm. a nine-hole golf course. And they were $100,000 short. He had already pledged. He had already given. He stood up and said, I'm going to finish this out, $100,000. Boom. They had no idea what was going to happen. He said he loves Nashville. Mentioned it on the broadcast. Yep. And, That's and what it's that. about, man. All right. Good night. God bless y'all. Appreciate y'all. Love y'all. Be safe this weekend. Check you on Monday. See y'all. Wouldn't want to be y'all. <laughs>